What is happening, everybody? And welcome to your Wednesday Pop Star Plus. Coming up, we're going to be diving into a very British scandal. We spoke to the stars of the dramatic miniseries, Claire Foy and Paul Bettany. That's going to be awesome. Also, Daryl DMC McDaniel stopped by, had a little chat with the third hour around here. We'll tell you what he had to say. And later, we're looking back on the beloved movie Sandlot, which, if you can believe it, is already turning 29 this month. But first, here are today's pop star headlines. Uh, first up, Bridgerton, dearest readers, Lady Whistledown has done it again. Season two of the hit series officially broke Netflix's record for the most watched wow. English yeah, language yeah. series so, so to good. premiere so, so on the streaming service. Yeah. By the way, you know what record it broke? Its what? own from Bridgerton season one. Yeah, Turns out fans were still on board with the period drama, even if that meant that Reggae Jean Page's beloved Duke would not be there. They didn't mm -hmm. care. They still yeah. showed up. So just how much binging did fans do to get the season into that top spot? Well, in the first 28 days it was streaming, that was viewed for 630 million hours. <laughs> oh my God! Wow. So that, By the way, that's a lot of tea, even more gossip, and so you have good. no life. It's, it's so, so good. good. It's not as that. like a, that is a it's lot. Awesome. It's provocative, soft no. corny. Yeah. It's not wow. like Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, okay. it's, it's less real good. Guys, Pop Star is a PG better. program here. Oh, Please, sorry. You're, you're, you're doing the Bridgerton. Next up, this is us. I don't write this stuff. I just read it. Uh, <laughs> don't worry. You can put the Kleenex down. While well, last night's episode may have had us in tears at Kate's mm -hmm. wedding. Sterling K. Brown's Instagram posts got us cracking up oh, this yeah. morning. Check out this full cast dance number from the set of Monday's episode. The Pearson's getting down. Wow. Come on, it's so good. Everybody except Kevin. I was gonna say, what's yeah. Justin doing? I can't tell if he's, he's on the phone. The yeah. I don't think he realizes what's happening. That I think he's just fun. randomly on a call. Next up, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. It's been 25 years since Goodwill Hunting, and now the Oscar winning duo is teaming up once again Tuesday. The Hollywood Reporter revealing that the pair is set to co star, write, and produce an untitled project that's centered around Nike's famous collaboration with Michael Jordan. Damon and Affleck are gonna take on the roles of Nike executives and co founders as they transform the fledging shoe company in the 80s into one of the hottest sneaker brands of all time. Ben is also set to direct the film, marking the first time that he's going to do so for his pal Matt. Looking forward to checking that out. Next up, here we go. The debate is on. Nirvana. Something about this 1991 song is sparking a lot of debate on TikTok. The track, of course, is Something in the Way. It's on Nirvana's Nevermind album that came out in 91. And after one Zoomer, aka Gen Z, or you, he referenced the 30 year old song as an oldie that you should know. Now, the comment section exploded with people questioning what is the proper use of the term oldie? In defense of the video's caption, the creator, his name is Ari Elkins, he told us at NBC News, I personally have no negative content to when a track comes out. A good song is a good song, period. I'm 21 and I think others my age should know more Nirvana songs other than Smells Like Teen Spirit. Elkins definitely receives a lot of support comments spanning multiple generations. They were cheering him on. But the question is, what do you guys think really an oldie is or a reference right to. here. You're There's right. five oldies <laughs> this right here. Like, what, what well, there is, a, there is from at its most pure in the late 70s, oldies is a reference to a radio format. It came out to combat classic rock. Okay. okay. So the oldies as a format played yeah. music from the late 50s to the early 60s. Yes. The Shirelles, uh, Chuck Berry, that yeah. kind of stuff. Okay. That's specifically what it wasn't ever meant to be a sliding term. Oh. It has evolved and you can make that argument for it, but like in the 1960s, music around 1920 wasn't considered an oldie. Right. 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 So it's open for debate because the, as a radio format, it did evolve. But at its purest, it really it speaks to a very specific mid-century. I don't think anything okay. we listen to in middle school shouldn't be considered an oldie. Yeah. No. I, I see what you're saying. It's like rock around the clock is an yeah. oldie. Yes. Right. It's an oldie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Led Zeppelin is not an oldie. Right. right. It's just right. older music. Right. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. You buy Thanks that. Thanks for the I buy it. I'm, I'm with mm -hmm. you. Craig doesn't look convinced. I just, I don't know. But I did like your coining of the term Zuma. I enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> all right. Well, let us know what you think. Is Nirvana, is that track <laughs> it's an oldie? Yeah. By the way, this, this all happened because Robert Pattinson played the Batman. The trailer came out in 2020. Yeah. They used this song, the Nirvana song, which was never released as a single from Nirvana. Mm -hmm. They used the song in the trailer, and it's awesome. Oh. And so younger people are like, what is that song? What is that yeah. song? And yeah. that opened up this whole debate. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. All right, you go to today.com and cast your vote. And here's a few more headlines for you. First up, Serena Williams in a new video posted to Instagram on Tuesday. The tennis superstar is going head to head with her cutest opponent yet. Take a look. Really? This is nuts. Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> that, of course, is Serena's four-year-old daughter, the lovely Olympia, and her dad, Alexis, jumping in to defend her in the comments section, writing, I refuse to believe Olympia missed that. Either way, that is one adorable tennis superstar in training. And finally, Origins of Hip Hop, a new docuseries headed to A&E Network, is set to explore the stories behind hip hop's biggest artists. Busta Rhymes, Eve, Fat Joe, Ice-T, they'll all lend their voices to the show, taking viewers down their path to success. Here's a peek at the first trailer. I was in a car and it was like, yo, that's me. I'm on the radio. The picture, picture. I felt like I'm supposed to be. <laughs> This style of DJ didn't exist. It's almost like something was calling me. Junior high, they would bully me every day. And that's when I started writing raps. If you could rap, the gangbangers liked you. So I started rapping. I'm cold like that. That's how you get named Ice. Oh, I'm going to love that. That's got me written all over it. Also, got to shout out DJ K Slave, prominent DJ, right in the center of all of that, just passed away recently. That's an eight episode series. It premieres on May 30th on A&E. And those are your headlines for today. Next up, we've got the juicy scoop in the new series, A Very British Scandal. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're gonna be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life this is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. And welcome back to Popstar Plus, a very British scandal, a three-episode miniseries. It's based on the dramatic real-life divorce between two British aristocrats. Stars Paul Bettany, who you've probably seen in the Marvel Universe, and of course Claire Foy, who you know from The Crown. Well, they spoke to us about the turbulent 20th century relationship that captivated the world. Well, it's about a very famous British scandal that I had no idea about. And I think what makes it different uh, from American scandals, which are uh, marvelous on their own, but uh, ours is sort of steeped in the class system. And um, Margaret's father was an industrialist and, and they sort of bought into the aristocracy. There's been lots of books written about her. She wrote one as well. Um, which is basically about how to throw a good dinner party, um, which no one really wants to know about because everyone wants to know about kind of the salacious elements of, the, of their divorce, especially. But what I found out was that a lot of the books that are written about her are written by men and there's quite a lot of judgment about her and her sexuality and who she was. Um, and so a lot of it was based on the research, but also was kind of the facts about her really, which was that she was very entitled and privileged and. She had come from a background where basically she got whatever she wanted from the men in her life. And then she sort of married a man who refused to give her anything. <laughs> um, and so basically then the relationship and the kind of the drama of it that is fictionalized takes over really. Yeah, because a lot of it is basically viewed her viewed from the outside and the judgment of other people about who she was and the terrible things that she did, which weren't that terrible really. So. I've been landed. I had such a lovely day and we've gone spoilt it. I'm gonna sleep at the club. And tomorrow morning we go back to Inverera, first train. I won't be. You'll do what I tell you to do and when I tell you to do it. You must be confusing me with one of your other wives. 
I think it was the first case kind of of its kind in the UK, definitely, because in that sort of divorce proceedings, they were always very private um, and there were never really women, women of means who could bring a divorce case against their husband or it was normally the husbands who were divorcing the wives and uh, they were pretty kind of open and shut cases really. But because Margaret had the means to basically take it to the bitter end, she was never going to give up it really played out in the media. And so they used the press, but I think that she she was an it girl, so she sort of grew up being lauded and kind of appreciated by the press. And in that way, completely took for granted the fact that they suddenly turned on her and went for her. And the narrative that she had created in her, in her mind of who she was and in the press was so quickly turned and she became kind of, it was a, basically a witch hunt really for her and everything about her because people loved it. They loved the salaciousness of it and the idea that she was a sexually promiscuous woman and how dare she divorce her husband and who does she think she is. And I think unfortunately, that's kind of one of the things that I felt when I was shooting it. I sort of thought that I would be shooting it and kind of looking back and going, oh, how terrible it was this woman was treated this way. And I realized that basically nothing's really changed. No, I've been a huge fan of Claire's. I think she's an amazing actress. And so that was the first thing. And then I heard there was a project with her and I read it. And for me, it, it seemed like nice counter programming, frankly, because I've been playing a lot of um, nice, warm, fuzzy ro robots, I suppose. <laughs> uh, and uh, to, to play a sort of... Um, uh, close to yourself. Something probably, yeah. closer to myself. <laughs> exactly. It's a bit of sociopath. Yeah, it's a cold sociopath. <laughs> uh, just seemed like I was a shoe in. So, uh, yeah, so that's uh, it. For, for me, I was excited at the idea of doing something very different and uh, to work with Claire. It was a real, a real joy working with her. She's an amazing scene partner and um, has similar instinct that I have, which is to try and bat away from what the dialogue is, is, is doing. And so it was, it, was, it was kind of surprising, I thought. It was great. Working with you. It, was, it felt like you had a real, yeah, we'd always talk about it, wouldn't we? We'd have like a real, it, that you had a friend on set, like it felt like you had someone who had your back, which is good, but sometimes it doesn't feel like that. Um, it was so much fun, too much fun sometimes. And we should mention you can find a very British scandal on Prime Video, and I'm sure you will. Just ahead, DMC's visit with our third hour crew, next. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. And we're back. Daryl McDaniels, a.k.a. DMC, is a founding member, of course, of the legendary hip-hop group Run DMC. Nowadays, he's got a new project to share. That's cool. It's a children's book. 
be told the third hour all about it. Our next guest is hip hop royalty. Daryl McDaniels is one third of the pioneering mm -hmm. rap group Run DMC behind hits we all love like King of Rock, It's Tricky, 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 and of course Walk, Walk This, this Way, way. Uh, featuring Errol Smith. We've all been singing Walk This Way all morning <laughs> and now Daryl, also known as DMC, is channeling his love for hip hop in a new way, his children's book, Daryl's dream. Daryl is here to tell us all about it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You know, Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Daryl, a lot of people don't know this. You've dedicated your life to helping kids. And as a child on the cover, you were teased and bullied for wearing glasses. Mm -hmm. You overcame it and are teaching children that you can turn around and, and do good. Why was it so important for you to put this in a children's book? Because kids are up against so many obstacles mm -hmm. in adversity. So I just wanted to write the book to tell children two things. You are perfect just the way you are, no matter what the bullies say. And because who you are, you are who you are, you can be and do anything that you want to do. Mm -hmm. Who you are empowers you to accomplish your dreams. Mm -hmm. And that's a message throughout the book. Even at the end, when you even tell the bully. You yeah, know, the bully you says, oh, oh, I want to be like you. Yep. Can you teach me yeah. to be like you? And he says, I'll teach you, but you have to be yourself. yourself. It's and it's important for children to understand it's okay to be themselves. Yeah. I got teased and bullied because I wore glasses. I've read comic books. I was a straight-A student. But yeah. all of that empowered me to become the mighty king of rock that I yeah. am. Yeah, and now you're a big rock star. Yeah. It's interesting. I started, you know, I said, you know, you're hip-hop royalty. You really are. Do you still listen to hip-hop these days? You know, there's some people who are like, oh, it's not the same. It's not the way we used to do it. And other people say, well, it's still their mm -hmm. gift. No, their I, I, I still listen to it. I was speaking at a high school in the Bronx, and... The worst thing that, these, that this generation want is the adults liking the same thing they like. Fair enough. Because we supposed to have music our parents hate. Yeah. But I said to these kids, I could relate to mumble rap and all this stuff. Well, that that's the thing. Like, my kids were like, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I'm but, like, what are you saying? Yeah. Yeah. But I had to tell them this. I said, the only difference between this generation and your generation is when we got criticized, we did some about it. In the beginning, they said, y'all ain't saying nothing. Hip hop to hibbit to hibbity hibbity. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. But when they criticized us and said, we ain't saying nothing, that's we true. wrote Planet Rock. We right. wrote the message. Tupac wrote Dear Mama and Brenda Had a Baby. We wrote It's Like That. Mm. So we gave masterpieces of incredible work and literacy and um, ideas, concepts, and images to show that we had a higher enthusiasm mm. about who we were as young people. Mm. Speaking of the origins of hip hop, a lot of people don't know this, but when hip hop started, the DJ was the star, not the exactly. MCs, right? Exactly. It's been 20 years since Gem Master J passed away. I, I, I was shocked when I read that mm. stat. Do you still think about him and, and, and what's that been like over these, these past two decades? Everything that I am, everything that I feel, everything that I want to share and relate to the world, that me and Run both did give to the world is because of Jay. Jay was the passion, Jay was the style, Jay was the flavor. And Jay was the emotion of Run DMC. Without Jay, there would be no Adidas deals. Mm. There would be no track suits and hats and gold I chains. Mean, and, yeah. you know, we made positivity gangster. Mm. Right. Well, you're so positive. And every time we see you, I make you sing. Well, <laughs> this way. way. Yep, every time. You can give us a line. Wait, we, we heard, heard you freestyle, freestyle, right? Okay, well. I don't freestyle much, but I write them as such. Okay. King DMC got the golden touch. It's the Today Show. Don't you know DMC got the crazy flow? The mics is rock. The stage I kill. And if you don't believe me, you can all ask Jill. <laughs> It is out now. So You're made of all the good stuff, Dave. Yes. DMC, man. Classic, classic, classic. So great to have him on. And be sure and t keep an eye out for that children's book. Still to come, we're going to be revisiting the beloved film that's turning 29 this month, Sam Lott. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now.
To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. And we're back with a movie that made You're Killing Me Smalls famous. 1993, the classic, The Sandlot. Nearly 30 years later, it still captures the hearts of viewers. We spoke to Patrick Renna, who delivered many of the film's most memorable lines. He played Ham Porter. He was just 14 years old, and he told us about the movie's resonance today. Katie, you, you want some more? more? You're killing me, Smalls. You're killing me, Smalls. You know, my favorite scenes from the movie have to be the, the s'more scene and uh, you're killing me, Smalls, because that's sort of become people's, uh, you know, sort of favorite line of mine. So it, just because of how much it means to other people and making s'mores and things like that, it sort of becomes mine. You stick it on the chocolate. Then you cover it with the other end. Yeah, me too. Then you stop. I, I think the, the most fun I had filming was there were two scenes and they're back to back in the movie, but they weren't back to back when we filmed them, which was the, the scene where uh, Phillips, the bad guy, comes with his you know crony team to the, the sand lot and we have our sort of back and forth um, yelling match. Am I good enough to lick the dirt off our cleats? Watch it, jerk. Shut up, idiot! Moron! Scab eater! Butt sniffer! Yeah. Puss licker! Fart smeller! And then it cuts to me behind the batter's box and I'm yelling all the insults at him. Hey, is that your sister out there in left field? Naked? She's naked. Shut up, Porter! Those are my favorite scenes. I originally, the insult scene on the sandlot was written for Benny, but uh, the director on the day said he wanted me to do it because I think Benny was becoming the hero and, you know, he didn't want his hero to trash talk, but he said, you know who could do it? Ham. And then uh, the next day was just, it was a lot of improv with me and the director. He had a bullhorn and he was just yelling insults at me to say to the guys, you know, like, is that your sister out there in left field, you know, uh, or, you know, whatever the insults were. And I would kind of chuckle and then I would read them back and it was a lot of fun. Just a little bit farther. The filming of the ball, getting the ball back from the beast was great because every new scene that we filmed was the next level of like, you know, uh, craftsmanship or science. You know, it started with a broomstick and then went to an erector set. Opening. And then went to a vet. Uh, vacuum suction, you know, apparatus or contraption. Issue your retrieval section number one, now! And it was really cool to see what the props department did to sort of, you know, make some new way of getting it, and we just had a lot of fun with that. God, he looks like a dead fish. Uh, what I remember about the pool scene with Wendy Peppercorn is Wendy Peppercorn. I mean, how do you forget? I also, we filmed that movie in Utah, and it was 100 degrees for three months every day, 95 to 100 degrees except one day, and that was the pool scene day. It was about 60 degrees, and you can see us all shivering in the pool in the movie, and Squints, uh, you think he's nervous to go kiss the lifeguard, but he actually is just shivering from absolute uh, chills. 
Oh, gosh. What I remember about auditioning for The Sandlot, um, you know, that was a long time ago. But uh, I was one of the one of the last, if not the last, characters to be cast. The callback was just to go meet the guys the next day. And, you know, the director said, you don't have the job. You have to get along with everyone. So, so I went. I was bigger than all of them, and I just forced them to get along with me, and it was great. You know, some of my favorite memories are actually recent in, you know, getting to see them again in the last couple of years. It sort of was like our junior high school reunion because I hadn't seen a lot of them in 25 years. You know, one of them was Tom Guyrie who played Small, so it was kind of fun to see him 25 years later. And I think on the set, my favorite memories were just, you know, the, the group scenes and like those, the treehouse scene was a lot of fun because, you know, that treehouse was built from the, from scratch and it was a fake tree even. So it was just kind of created for us. And then the director would have us go in there and we almost had our own sleepover campfire night. And, you know, we had the candles for the s'mores and we were making them and we were, I mean, we had to do about a hundred takes because that s'more scene, we were just making each other laugh, all of us, and everyone was ruining takes. And because we were just, it was like boys around a campfire. Who is the most and least like their character? First of all, I would say, at least back then, when we filmed, the most like their character probably was me. I was sort of the loud mouth little punk, uh, or big punk. Hey girls. But also the defender of the Sandlot and that sort of thing. I would say the least like their character... Well, the least like their character now is Marty York, who played Yeah Yeah. I don't know if you've seen recent pictures of him, but he's about 210 pounds of pure muscle. And back then he was a little shrimp. Uh, probably back then the least like their character was was Squints. Shauncey Leopardi played a, at least when he was kissing the lifeguard, he played a nervous, insecure little boy, and he was anything but. He was uh, definitely the coolest of all of us filming that movie. I personally like Loan Outside just like I like it. Stupid on me. Loan Outside just like I like it. The Great Bambino, yes. I'm the Great Bambino. What? I'm the Great Bambino. I don't think any of us imagined that the movie would, would turn into what it has. You know, I think we knew that it wasn't terrible because you kind of get a sense when you're making a movie if it's good or not. And we knew that it was good, but I don't think there's any way to know that it would mean this much to so many people as it does now. Well, first of all, I think the movie resonates with kids because of baseball. And that is America's pastime. Also, because we got out there and we were playing and we were out in the wilderness and or, or a sandlot and we were, you know, getting dirty. And like Karen Allen has the great line, like, go out, have fun, get dirty. I want you to get out into the fresh air and make some friends. I don't think there's enough of that right now. And there's too much of this, you know? So families like the movie because it, it it's about spending time together and friendship and brotherhood and inclusion and it sort of reminds everyone what all of this is really about, which is spending time with each other and not just swiping. I mean, swiping's okay once in a while, but you know. Man, it's hard to believe. This month marks 29 years of The Sandlot. Fun to hear Patrick's memories. That's going to do it for today's Popstar Plus, everybody. Thanks for being here. We do appreciate it. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same place. Be well. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it.
Thanks for having me on. Good to be with you. Well, let's let's get started. You know, we're talking about Earth Day. Uh, what's your what are your first memories of Earth Day? You know, when I was in school, you, you started to hear about it more and more. And I remember we would do events. The teacher would invite us to spend time outside or study things about the environment. I think I associated it a lot with you know, greenery and trees, uh, a little different than now when I think about it more in terms of invisible things like carbon pollution. But it's only become more important, and more timely since then. And so talk to me about uh, your personal goals when it, when it comes to climate change. Well, look, when you think about the sources of greenhouse gas pollution in our economy, the number one category of that is actually transportation. And so for me, if you work anywhere in or around transportation, there, there's a responsibility and an opportunity to be a huge part of the solution. So the, the goals that I take with me to work every day uh, are both professional and personal, because they also have to do with making sure that my kids, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a new father as of less than a year ago, um, that, that they thrive. But, but also, of course, it's very personal because, uh, you know, uh, my generation is really going to uh, rise and fall, I think, based on how good we are at facing the climate challenge. So the infrastructure bill, uh, which would be probably the largest of its kind in making our, our transportation networks, uh, our infrastructure in, in over 50 years. Mm. How does that, how is that bill going to impact our goals for climate change, you know, to fight climate change? So the infrastructure law is going to be a huge part of how the American economy can rise to the climate challenge. And one thing that's especially exciting to me about this is it's also a place where we can break down this old idea that we had to choose between climate and the economy. We are creating jobs through the transportation infrastructure of the future that will also be responsible for improvements in our climate. I'll give you just a handful of examples. We're funding things like low or no emission buses, electric buses that are cleaner for the neighborhoods they operate in, and where there's gonna be a lot of job creation in manufacturing those buses here in the US. We're funding a, a network of charging stations for electric vehicles as more and more Americans consider going electric. Uh, you know, one of the biggest things on your mind if you're weighing whether to buy an EV is whether they're going to be uh, charging stations available if you take a lot of long road trips, the same way you know there's going to be a gas station for you when you go out on the interstate. And uh, making sure that quality transit is available for people wherever they live. Beyond infrastructure law, does it also take and how do you implement uh, a, a change in attitude? For example, here in New York City, uh, I, I like to bike, uh, bike to work, I walk to work, but you know, people get really worked up when you say, well, we're going to put in bike lanes and things like that. People, you know, you know, they have been used to having unfettered access to, to uh, you know, uh, wider streets and, and plenty of parking. Well, my experience is that whenever you have something new, it takes a little getting used to. But when you have good policies for uh, having safe pedestrian or, or, or bike passage in addition to uh, streets being for car traffic, when you do all of that together, once you get it right, people would never want to go back. Talk to me about the Department of Transportation's role in, in reducing pollution and, and, and trying to fight climate change. Well, the way I would say it is that every transportation decision is a climate decision, whether you recognize it or not, for the simple reason that transportation is such a big source of emissions. If we make sure that there are cleaner buses, then we're benefiting a neighborhood and benefiting the climate. If we make sure that there's a, a good way to get around, whether you have a car or not, we're creating options for people that takes congestion off the road, and that means less pollution. Anytime that we make a decision about how people or goods move around, whether we're talking about trains or even ships and aircraft, uh, we're making a decision about our future too, how sustainable it's going to be, how safe it's going to be, how healthy it's going to be. And I believe that the 2020s will be remembered as the deciding decade, certainly within transportation, but really across our whole economy for whether we successfully face this climate challenge. What has been the biggest pushback against the infrastructure law and, and how do you push back 
against the pushback? The biggest thing is, I think, uh, some skepticism, maybe some healthy skepticism about whether this is really going to make a difference in people's lives. You, you see these big numbers being thrown around in Washington. A lot of folks are saying, okay, but is, is this actually going to make me better off? And of course, the best way to address that is results. The other thing that's really exciting about working on these issues is they don't have the same kind of knee-jerk partisanship to them that a lot of other issues do in, in Washington right now. Uh, there's no such thing as a Republican bridge or a Democratic road. Uh, I've traveled to some of the most conservative and, and liberal places in the country alike, and I'll tell you, one thing people have in common everywhere they live is a desire to be able to commute to work, get to school, uh, find their way to, to visit loved ones safely and conveniently. And that's something that, that we're working to deliver in every part of the country, no matter your politics and no matter whether it's rural, urban or in between. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world, because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at eight on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We're now in a moment where there is a, you know, oil, you know, gas prices are up. Inflation's a problem. Uh, there's a push to ramp up oil production. Do you worry that at this moment, that kind of, that that climate that uh, the fight against climate change and reducing our our dependence on fossil fuels get pushed gets pushed to the back burner because we're worried about prices yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I think when we're hurting because of things like high oil and gas prices, it creates a lot of pressures that cut both ways. Uh, on one hand, it, it can lead to, to more interest in, in things like fuel efficient vehicles or hybrid or electric vehicles. On the other hand, it, it creates the, the need for a lot of short term steps uh, to make gas more freely available to, to just to help people get through the season. But I think all of it points to the same long term fact which is that the sooner that we can depend on US-based renewable, reliable energy, uh, the less we're gonna be subject to these kinds of ups and downs. And, and that's a reminder that we need to be looking to a future that is better for Americans, whether you're talking about health, climate, uh, or just dollars and cents, uh, we can move toward a future that's better than the past. Are you, uh, are you hopeful about our future when it comes to the climate? I am, because I see how people are rising to this challenge, uh, whether it's the, the workers who are involved in the, the shift toward electric vehicles or people in the agriculture sector who are finding ways to uh, practice soil management that, that's going to help us, uh, or the, the young advocates and activists who are out there with such moral authority saying, hey, if you're old enough and in a position of responsibility right now, uh, you got to do a good job at this. Uh, I see the power of it, and, and I've seen the conversation shift from just doom and gloom, talking about the wildfires and the hurricanes and all the terrible uh, mistakes that we've made, as important as that is. I, I, I've seen that sense of urgency coupled with a sense of uh, a national project that, that right now we as a country are, are working to beat this challenge before it's too late. And there's extraordinary innovation, extraordinary creativity going into that. It's going to mean some hard choices. It's going to mean some, uh, some hard work. But we're doing that hard work right now. And I'll tell you, you know, if, if the work of my colleagues here at the Department of Transportation, the, the uh, public servants, many of whom have been working on these issues for years or even decades, 
uh, and, and the transportation stakeholders that we work with, the, the, the workers, the, the, the companies, um, if, if their commitment is anything to go by, uh, I think we have a lot to look forward to, even if this is a perilous time. Well, uh, Secretary Buttigieg, we really appreciate you taking time to talk about uh, what the Department of Transportation is up to and is in its uh, fight to try to help get this infrastructure law going and uh, working on, on what we need to do for our climate. So really appreciate you taking the time, sir. Well, thank you. It's such an important subject and uh, appreciate the chance to talk about it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters bang down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? As we look at uh, April as, as Earth Month, uh, we've got Earth Week, and of course, Earth Day. But in reality, every day should be should be Earth Day. Uh, I, through the, the auspices of the Today Show, have been privileged to to see these things up close. To be in Antarctica, to be in Iceland, to be in Greenland, uh, Alaska, uh, different parts of our country, where and uh, all around the world, uh, where we're seeing climate change uh, really start to have a major impact, uh, and, and we we see it now. Uh, in our own weather forecast, we see it uh, in other countries as uh, as uh, deforestation and drought causes uh, just untold suffering, and and it can sometimes seem like a an overarching, overwhelming uh, concept: climate change. And what can I, as an individual, do? It's too big. I I, I can't make a difference. But you can't. And uh, we're going to talk over this these next few minutes with uh, a number of people who are part of those who have recognized the problem and are trying to do something about it and have some ideas of what we can do as well. So uh, uh, let's start off with uh, two scientists, uh, uh, Stephanie Herring, who is the Geophysical Sciences and Developmental Branch Chief of NOAA's National Center for Environmental Information and uh, ocean and climate uh, scientist plus Forbes contributor Priya Shukla, uh, who is a PhD candidate at the Bodega Marine uh, Laboratory at UC Davis, studying ocean warming, disease, and oyster farming. So Stephanie, I'd like to start with you. Um, you, you are involved in something in called attribution research. What is attribution research? Yeah, so it's um, just like it sounds if you wanted to attribute a quote to somebody. Well, when in, in the field of weather and climate, one of the things that we, it's really important to know is to understand not just how our weather and climate are changing, but why. 
what are the drivers? And specifically in our area, looking at the role of whether human caused climate change and the increase in greenhouse gas emissions you know, effectively since the industrial revolution, the question is, is, has that and is that changing the weather and climate events that you and I are experiencing today? And that is really the goal of attribution research. In climate change attribution, we do something very similar. We look at the planet that we have today and we look at our risk of experiencing an extreme event based on you know, the observational record and what we know about our weather and climate today. But we have to compare that to a planet that has not experienced greenhouse gas emissions, and that planet doesn't actually exist in the real world. So we use climate models to mm -hmm. compare the planet that we have to an alternative planet that hasn't experienced greenhouse gas emissions primarily since, like I said, the Industrial Revolution. And by comparing those two, we can look, just like a doctor will look at how you know certain behavior increases your chance of certain diseases, we can look at how has the chance of a particular event changed on the planet that we live in by comparing it to a planet where humans have not been emitting greenhouse gases. You brought up uh, an interesting point in that, you know, we don't have a planet that is absent of human interaction. And so it's hard to judge, but what did you find in your research during the pandemic? I I'm curious about that. We did not see any change in the trend of um, extreme events being impacted by human climate change. That being said, you know, the, the science qualifier here, of course, extreme, the, they're not really randomly sampled events from around the world. Scientists, shockingly, are actually humans, uh, and <laughs> they um, have the same inclination to be interested in the places that they live and the places that they are experiencing. And so attribution science tends to pick events where some of the scientists are also living and experiencing these extreme events. And so it's not a, not a random sampling, for instance, the oceans are actually very undersampled because um, humans don't tend to live in the ocean. So, um, but, but that being said, in the events that were studied, the signal is still very, very strong and very, very clear that simply having two years of the pandemic um, where people's patterns did change really did not impact the weather and climate events and the role of climate, the role we found for climate change in those events. NOAA released a study, a recent study, it says uh, by 2050, sea level rise could equal 12 inches. Uh, uh, so that's got to have massive uh, ramifications for coastal communities in our country and really around the world. Sea level rise and climate change is happening on a scale that is much faster than what I, seems like humans are able to fully tabulate and comprehend and then also respond to. And so... NOAA is doing this incredible work and so are a bunch of other bodies and trying to figure out what is going to happen. But human response seems to be on a much slower scale, both probably because there's a little bit of like denial and fear and concern, but also because people are trying to make the best possible solutions, uh, true things that we can only predict and haven't fully seen the impacts of, only glimmers up through things like King Tide events. In doing this research, um, has there been a year where you looked at the data and you went, whoa, yikes. <laughs> Yeah, so for me, that year um, was actually the, the kind of the 2016-27 timeframe, where um, it was one of the Earth's hottest on record. And, you know, for, I've been in this area for, I don't know, seven or eight years. And up until then, we'd always said, someday in the future, we will start to see events that would only have been possible because of human-caused climate change. Someday. And at the same time, it was, it was happening in front of us. And um, I think that the more we look at this, the more we're going to realize that climate change is not some kind of future thing that will happen to us someday. It's happening now, it's happening today, and it's having real impacts today in the weather and climate that we're experiencing, in addition to many, many other impacts like the ones that Priya is looking at. Uh, talk to me, Priya, if you can, about uh, ocean acidification. What is it? And what are the ramifications for us? Why should we care? 
Yeah, ocean acidification is sometimes called the other CO2 problem. And basically the ocean is this huge sponge. So not only has it absorbed over 90% of the heat, which we've already talked about, but like excess heat that humans have emitted, but it's also absorbing greenhouse gases from the atmosphere, including carbon dioxide. And so what that causes is a series of chemical chain reactions that actually end up making the ocean more acidic and causing animals in the ocean to actually begin to dissolve and the, it's not that the entire animal wait is dissolving. what do you yeah. what do you say this again yeah so basically because the ocean is becoming more acidic as a result of absorbing co2 parts of animals are actually beginning to dissolve and so what that means is that essentially when animals are building their hard parts which are made of calcium carbonate the very same thing that our bones are made of those animals have a really difficult time maintaining that structure or continuing to build it and this is especially true when they're really young and they're at their most vulnerable and that's when we see that they can actually become malformed so they look wonky as they're growing up and we've seen this both in laboratory experiments but also in field experiments. So this is something that is just beginning to really take shape, but we're already seeing that in places like California where every summer, cool, deep, already acidic ocean water washes ashore due to just a series of like wind events bringing deep water on shore. That acidic water is actually hitting animals right now already. And that's expected to get worse as the ocean continues being forced to absorb CO2 because we haven't really changed the amount of greenhouse gas emissions that we're putting into the atmosphere. So how do we, how do we change that? Can we reverse it? So that is something that is an area of active exploration, like are there ways to do this? And it's definitely right now in the thought experiment phase, but people are trying to resolve this issue on a smaller scale. On a larger scale though, that is the bigger question. And that is something that um, I hope we'll have an answer to very soon. Stephanie, as you research uh, all of this, um, are you hopeful that we can make a difference make a change, you know, modify our behavior so that, you know, if, if not reversing it, at least slowing things down? I think that we have to um, continue to, to hope that the, you know, better elements of our nature will prevail here and that, um, like you said in your opening remarks, which I thought was very powerful, it is true. This seems like a really overwhelming problem. It really does. And it is but it's not an unsolvable problem. It really isn't. The solutions are actually the technology. Many of those things are already in place today. It's more a question of, I think, whether you know we um, as both individuals, com families, communities, and societies, mm -hmm. you know, what actions we're, we're willing to take to help get us to a place where we are on a planet where yeah. you know my children will be able to enjoy some of the same things that I've been able to appreciate over, over my lifetime. If you want more information on, uh, on NOAA's National Centers for Environmental Information and how they're providing communities and businesses with data and information for a resilient future, visit ncei.noaa.gov. Well, meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? To 
stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're really excited. Uh, Dr. Sanjan, thank you for being with us. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Al. Thanks for having me. He is a global conservation scientist whose work uh, spans from genetics to wildlife migration to nature's impacts on the well-being. He's also the CEO of Conservation International, and he's got a great new series on PBS called Changing Planet. Uh, it's an unprecedented seven-year global storytelling effort, uh, latest science and local voices. Uh, it monitors climate change in uh, six iconic locations all around the world. So a seven-year effort uh, seems pretty unprecedented for uh, a television project. How, how, did, how did this idea come about? Well, um, Al, it's just getting started. So this is year one right. of a project. And the idea is to document what I think is the most consequential decade in human history. Um, you know, the science is clear. The IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reports make clear that what we do in this decade will fundamentally alter the trajectory of our planet. It doesn't mean 2030, everything's over. It does mean the path we're on at 2030, we're not turning back. Uh, so, so that's why we said seven years is the right year. We kind of count down to this decade. And then we said, well, we can't do it from one place. Let's go to you know, six places and tell the stories of our changing planet from those places through the eyes of the people who live there and the wildlife that we see. So how did you pick these places? Which are the places and, and how did you pick them? What we did was we looked at places that were rich in carbon, that had, you know, there were iconic landscapes. You know, you're going to tell a story about climate change. Iceland is probably a good place to think about. And how can you think about climate change or the impacts of climate change in the United States without thinking about California? Like think about what the last couple of years have looked like you know, in the summers uh, in California, with the fires, the droughts, uh, it's been, you know, it, it really has become unfortunately emblematic of the challenge. And then we thought, look, East Africa, you have humans, wildlife, uh, we wanted coral reefs, so we thought Maldives, you know, you'll get a really good sense of an island that's sinking. Uh, Cambodia, because it's got the largest, one of the largest freshwater lakes in the world, Tomli Sap, that feeds millions and millions of people. More fish come out of that lake every year than all the lakes and rivers combined in North America. And then of course the Amazon. You know, we know about the Amazon and why it's the lungs of our planet. And so we thought Brazil or the Amazon would be important. So these, this is how we sort of picked some of these locations. Obviously we made some adjustments because of uh, COVID and our ability to travel. Uh, I think I would have loved to have Great Barrier Reef, but you know, it was a bit difficult to get to Australia and get, but more importantly, get out of Australia. Uh, so, so, so there was some, some things that we just had to had to compromise on. Your organization, Conservation International, uh, tell us about the work you guys do. Right. So uh, we work in the global south, almost exclusively in the global south, in about 32 countries directly and about 50 countries indirectly. And what we do is really three things. The first is we protect and restore nature for climate. So we know that you cannot get to the Paris Climate Agreement, 1.5 degrees or 2 degrees, if you don't first protect nature. It's impossible to do the math. So we think you got to protect and restore nature at scale, number one. Number two, we want to massively increase the amount of oceans under conservation. Oceans have been highly underinvested. Less than 5% is truly well protected. And we think there's a big opportunity there. And then the third thing we do, which I think is kind of the most interesting thing, is we find ways to balance production with protection. So if you can link those two things up, uh, then you can actually create sort of models of sustainability. I think sometimes people see protecting the planet, trying to mitigate climate change as a zero-sum game. You either do the, if, if you do this, you're going to kill economies globally. And that's not the case, is it? That's not the case, but we have to be honest about the cost of transition. So it is clearly not the case. So one of the neat things about the most recent IPCC report is it pointed to 
you know, basically two dozen countries where the economies have grown and yet they've managed to reduce their emissions. So this is living proof that you can do both. You can reduce emissions and continue to grow your economy. I really appreciate uh, the conversation. You gave us a lot to think about. Thank you, Yal. Keep doing your great work. by Walmart. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. We're turning everyday leftovers into brand new dishes for the Today Table. With a little imagination and a few fresh ingredients, we'll show you how to make amazing next day dishes. I'm starting off your morning right with a hearty protein packed quiche. And I'll be whipping up the perfect lunch or anytime snack. Crispy rice cakes with the perfect savory toppings. And I'm making a velvety chocolate mousse with a surprising ingredient. Get ready. Because we're clearing out the fridge. And leaving no leftover behind. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. Whenever I'm doing meal prep, I usually end up with a few leftover ingredients. Today, I'm using some leftover rotisserie chicken to make a quiche with spinach, feta, and sun-dried tomatoes. So, let's get started with our crust. I've got some store-bought pie crust right here, and I'm gonna lightly flour my surface. You don't need too much. All the hard work has been done for us. We're just gonna roll out our pie crust. And be really gentle with it because it is pretty fragile. All right, I'm gonna sprinkle the pie crust with a little bit of flour, and we are going to roll this out. Just gently enlarge it, so that way it'll fit comfortably inside of our pie pan. Okay, I've got this rolled out really nicely, so I'm gonna take my pie pan, I'm just gonna put it right on top of it, just like this. And just take your fingers and lightly go around the edges. I'm telling you, the first time I did this, I felt super accomplished, because I'm like, I'm a baker now. I'm, I'm baking. Mama, look at me. And then you're gonna take these edges that are falling over. You're gonna just fold them up under here, so that way you kind of get an even crust. This is the today, all day kitchen, right? So we're gonna just make it a little bit fancier. So after I get done doing this, we're gonna add some texture and some form to this pie crust. And all you're gonna do, it's a trick I learned. You're gonna take your finger right up under here and crimp it down, press down, and pull it out. Down, and pull it out. All the way like this. And go all the way around the pie crust. I know, the first time I did this, I was like, yo, Kev, look at you. He's a baking machine. And keep going around the edges. All right, the last one here. All right, now look at this. It looked like it's from a bake shop, right? I know. I did it myself. And you could do it too. So with our pie crust ready, it is camera ready. We're gonna let this rest in the fridge while I prep the rest of the ingredients. Next thing we're gonna prep is our spinach. All right, I'm going to set a stainless steel skillet on a medium high heat. In goes a little bit of water. That's all we wanna see. Watch this, boom. In goes the spinach. It's like the Wizard of Oz. It's melting, it's melting. You shouldn't have to cook the spinach for more than one minute. And boom, this is just about right because I don't want it to be completely mushy. I'm gonna take it out. All right, spinach is cooked. Move on to the other star, the sun-dried tomatoes. All right, we're gonna stack our tomatoes together. Just take a knife. We're just gonna dice them. Look at all this goodness and they're very fragrant too. Now, moving on to my leftover rotisserie chicken, we're gonna take the skin off of the chicken, peel that back. I know some of y'all are just moaning right now, like, <laughs> what are you doing? It's all right, don't worry, there's still a lot of flavor in this dish and you're not gonna miss it. Just going to make sure that there are no bones in here 
And you can pull it apart with your hands first, especially if it's cold and left over. If it's warm from just purchasing it, then you may have to use some forks. But I just like to get in there and just use my hands. But of course you do what's most comfortable for you. And try not to do a little bit of this, which I am so guilty of. But you know, a little tasting along the way isn't a bad thing. What home cook doesn't nibble and taste along the way? That's how you know it's good. Let's move on with the recipe. Next part that we have to do, we've got to prep our eggs. So I'm going to be using some whole eggs. If you are team lean and mean and you want a wonderful, delicious egg white quiche, mmm, can't wait to wake up to that on the weekend. <laughs> I'm kidding, I eat egg white. But for this one, my leftovers deserve whole eggs. Extra protein, a little extra fat, a little extra love. That's all I'm saying. Add in a little bit of milk. Whisk this up. And we're gonna season it with a little bit of sea salt and pepper for the culture. Boom, salt, pepper. The internet will let you know if you cook unseasoned food right away. And I'm pretty sure our today all day kitchen fam is no different. <laughs> there we go. Now it is time to bring together our beautiful quiche. I'm gonna add in our chicken. Just spread it out. This is gonna be a really meaty protein pack quiche. And you wanna spread it out very well on the pie crust to make sure that every slice gets a little bit of that protein. There we go. Adding in some of our sun-dried tomatoes. Sprinkle those around as well. In goes the spinach. There we go. Our last bit of a protein boost and flavor boost. The feta. Just kind of crumble it up. I bought this crumbled, but if you want to buy the entire block, just use a fork to crumble it up on a plate and then do it. There we go. Now let's give this one more whisk and we're gonna pour in our egg. Watch the slow pour. Getting a little bit more, just some texture on top. Cracked pepper. Boom. Look at this beauty. It looks amazing before we've even baked it. This is what we want. We're gonna bake this beauty for about 45 minutes at 350 or until the center is set. I've let this cool for about 15 minutes. It's still really warm, so it's perfect. You can see when I move it, there's no movement there. Let's dig in. I'm gonna give myself a nice, generous portion of this. Oh my gosh, and look how creamy it is. Look at it. The heat has just made that feta just even creamier. I can't wait to dig in. Self-control and portion control is gonna be hard with this one, so don't write me and complain. Kev, okay, I ate the whole thing. <laughs> I understand. Mmm, mmm. I guarantee you, your friends, your family will love this. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this?
Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Whenever I order takeout, I usually have a ton of rice left over. You could always just reheat and eat what you've got, but I love making crispy rice cakes. So many different cultures have their own version of crispy rice, and now it is all over TikTok. So I cannot wait to show you mine. We are going to start with our rice, and I have three cups right here. So we're gonna add a couple other things to it to boost its flavor and also make sure that it all sticks together and doesn't fall apart when frying. So what we wanna do is we just wanna take some cornstarch right here, and we are going to add in a little bit of water, and then we're actually gonna add in some lemon. We're just going to whisk it on up into a slurry. It smells fabulous, super fragrant. We are going to pour it over the top of the rice. I'm also going to season it with some kosher salt, a nice little three finger pinch. And then we are just going to fold it all together. Here I have an eight by eight square baking dish and I have lined it with some plastic wrap. So we're just going to take that rice, pop it directly into the pan, and with our fingers, which I find clean hands can honestly be the best tools in the kitchen, we are going to just press that rice down into the corners of the pan. Looking good. It is always so much fun to take leftovers and turn them into something new and awesome. I think that a lot of people don't realize the beauty of half of the work already being done for you. We're going to freeze it for at least one hour, up to two hours, and while that's freezing, I'm gonna get some of my toppings ready. I love topping my rice cakes with the perfect soft boiled egg. So I'm gonna show you how to make the perfect one, my little tips and tricks to do it. First thing you wanna do, boil some water. I am going to take a spider, you could also take a slotted spoon, and delicately lower those eggs one by one into the boiling water. While those eggs are going, let's get to work on our lemony scallion yogurt sauce. Starting off, I have two cleaned scallions right here. What we're going to do is we're going to trim off the root of those scallions. And then we will slice them on an angle, also known as a bias, into really thin rounds. So we'll just take that, pop it directly into the sauce, and then we are going to take that lemon half that we have from earlier, squeeze all that juice right into the yogurt. And then we're gonna hit it with a little bit of salt to awaken its flavor. So we're gonna mix this up. And there you go, we have our yogurt sauce. And it almost looks like a looser version of scallion cream cheese. Our eggs are done. We are going to strain them and immediately transfer them into our ice bath. And what the ice bath is gonna do is it's going to shock the eggs and immediately stop them from continuing to cook. Another thing that I love about an ice bath is as that egg cools, what's going to happen is the white is going to slowly pull back from the shell, creating a really thin layer that will allow us to peel these eggs beautifully. Okay, our eggs have been chilling out and it is time to crack them. So what I'll do is I'll take the egg and I will Tap it on a flat surface to break up that shell. And then here's my trusty sidekick. Say hello to the spoon. We wanna make sure that the spoon goes underneath that coating. And the spoon is going to do a gorgeous job of lifting that shell right off. Wow. How satisfying is that? I mean, come on, you guys, take a look at that. Absolutely perfect soft boiled egg. Our rice is nice and frozen and it is time to fry them up. So we're going to start by adding avocado oil to our skillet. We are going to heat this up until it is shimmering. And while we're waiting for that to heat up, let's slice up our rice. We're going to take that 
overhang that we have and delicately lift the rice block out. Look at how great that looks. Pull it back. And then what I like to do to make sure that we have even squares is I like to slice off about a half of an inch off of the sides of the rice. And you really wanna make sure that you're using a sharp knife here. Fabulous. Take this, compost it, and then we are going to cut these into nine even pieces, about two inches by two inches. We are going to crisp these up for about five minutes per side until we get a nice golden brown crust on the exterior. Set your timers. These are looking really good and now it is time to flip. Ooh, gorgeous golden. We love to see that. These are looking beautiful. We're gonna transfer them to a wire rack lined baking sheet. And we wanna salt these rice cakes while they are still hot so that they can hold on to the salt that hits them. Okay, I'm going to fry up this next batch and then it will be the moment we're all waiting for, topping the rice cakes and eating them. You can top these any way you like, but I'm gonna show you my favorite way to serve these crispy rice cakes. We'll start with our beautiful avocado. Whenever I'm picking an avocado, I always want to make sure that when I press down, it has a little bit of give. Another great way to test is I'll look at the top of the avocado where the stem is. If you pull the stem out and you see that the inside is a nice bright green color, that is how you know the avocado is perfectly ripe. So we are going to take a sharp knife we will insert it into the top of the avocado until you hit the pit. And then delicately roll the avocado around, slicing through to cut it in half. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. As far as peeling the avocado is concerned, instead of scooping it out with a spoon, I love to peel the skin off with my fingers. And then we are going to take the avocado and with the tip of our knife, we will slice into thin strips. I just really love how fancy it looks when you slice it. I think adding a nice, punchy, bright element with a lemon wedge is an awesome way to just give a little extra oomph to your overall presentation. Next up, we have our eggs. This is a really fun trick that I love to use when I am serving these eggs on our crispy rice. You're gonna take your egg. If you want, you can dunk it in a little bit of water or you could even just roll it in that residual lemon just to get it slightly wet. And then what you're going to do is you're gonna take that seasoning and you're going to roll the egg into the Everything Bagel seasoning. I'm a big fan of Everything Bagel seasoning, huge fan. And once this is nicely seasoned, you'll take your sharp knife and slice right through, revealing that perfect jammy yolk. Are you kidding me? I mean, how stunning is that? That is incredibly satisfying. So let's bring back one of our crispy rice pieces. This one has that avocado on it. And for this one, some of our pastrami smoked salmon. I love pastrami smoked salmon. So it's just your traditional smoked salmon, except it has pastrami spice on it. Now I'm gonna plate these up and make them even more gorgeous with our sauce. And what I like to do is just create a really beautiful swoosh on the bottom of the platter and just spread it into a really beautiful layer. Now it is time to adorn our platter with our crispy rice. So remember those green scallion tops that we saved earlier? We are going to take them and just sprinkle them over the tops just for a little extra jewelry and flavor. Okay, I can't contain myself. I have to try one of these. I'm gonna take a little lemon, squeeze it over the top. Let's give it a taste. 
Okay. First of all, do you hear that crunch? That is stunning. I just have to say that this is one reason why you should never toss out your leftover rice. I promise you, you can always put it to good use. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. When I first went vegan, I thought I'd had to give up chocolate desserts for good, since so many dessert recipes include dairy or eggs. But now, my day isn't complete without something chocolatey and sweet. It didn't take long for me to discover the magic of aquafaba. What is that, you ask? Well, it's the leftover ingredient that's the key to my fluffy chocolate mousse. And it's actually found in a can of chickpeas. But before we get to that, let's start melting some chocolate. So I have my chocolate here over a double boiler, so let's turn on the heat. We wanna set this to a slow simmer. And there's all different varieties of vegan chocolate. I'm using mini chips, but they also have chunks, they have big chips, and it also comes in whole bars. I like the mini chips because they melt quickly, they're easy to work with, and I just wanna get my mousse done quickly, so why not go the easy route? Our water is at a slow, gentle simmer, so our chocolate is gonna start melting. You wanna make sure to continuously stir it so then that the heat can be distributed throughout the chocolate and it'll melt evenly. Okay, so once all the chips are melted, our next ingredient for our mousse base is some vegan sweetened condensed milk. This is made entirely from coconut and it is so good, it's gonna add a nice creamy base and really thicken up that chocolate and kind of make it a ganache consistency. Now, you can flavor this however you'd like, but I like mine a little bit luxurious and indulgent, so we're gonna give this an amaretto flavor. So it's gonna be a bit of almond, a bit of vanilla. It's gonna taste like Italy. So to this, we're gonna add one ounce of amaretto liquor. Once the liquor is incorporated, we're gonna add in two flavorings, a splash of vanilla and a splash of almond. Almond extract smells so good, but a little goes a long way. It's very strong, so make sure to just add a tiny splash because otherwise it'll become too bitter and overwhelm the whole dish. And it should look like this, glossy and thick almost like the consistency of a ganache. So this looks great, so I'm gonna remove it from the heat and let it cool completely. So while our chocolate cools, we can work on our secret ingredient, our aquafaba. So aquafaba may sound fancy, but all it is is the water from a can of 
chickpeas. Instead of tossing this, which most people do, if you whip aquafaba up, it turns into a consistency almost of an egg white or like a meringue. You can use it in all different ways. The way I would think about aquafaba is the same as egg whites. So if you were to use egg whites in a dish or even whipped cream, you can substitute it with aquafaba. I recommend getting a can of low sodium or no salt added chickpeas. That way the water doesn't affect the flavor of what you're making. So what we wanna do is to our stand mixer fitted with the whip attachment, we want to make sure that our bowl is chilled. So right before I whip up my aquafaba, I like to keep my bowl in the fridge for at least 10 to 15 minutes so it gets ice cold. And the reason why we wanna do that is because it'll then help us whip up the aquafaba so it turns into stiff peaks. If it's too warm, then it's not gonna whip up and it's just gonna fall flat. So lock in your mixer and we're gonna set it to high. So I'm gonna stop the mixer because I wanna add a little bit of cream of tartar. This is gonna help stiffen up the peaks and get us that nice, glossy, stiff peak that we're looking for in a chocolate mousse. So let's go ahead and add that in and turn on mixer back on high. Let's give it another minute or two to get it real stiff because the stiffer it is, the more delicate and airy our mousse is gonna be. Okay, our aquafaba is looking good. Yep, this is exactly what we want. A stiff peak, it doesn't fall. So now we want to fold our aquafaba into our melted chocolate that's been cooled. We start with a little bit and you gently fold it in. If I just sat here and stirred it, it would turn into a soup and it would not set into a mousse. So we wanna make sure we're adding in as much air as possible. So I keep folding until I don't see any more streaks and then I go in with some more dollops of aquafaba. Okay, this looks beautiful. So we're ready for our next dollop. This is looking great, it's all an even color. So now I just have to get into little jars so it can set in the fridge. So I'm gonna clear up my area so I can do that. So we're gonna pour this in here and set it in the fridge overnight. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. So our mousse have set overnight and they look beautiful. You can see they're perfectly set. There's no liquid. You can see all the beautiful air bubbles. It does not look vegan, let me tell you. I'm garnishing these with fresh cherries, but you can easily use a jarred cherry like an amarena, which will go really well with this. Okay, now I think it's fair to say that I have been waiting way too long to actually dig into this. So why don't we go for a taste? Can you believe this texture? 
This is made from chickpea water. No egg whites, no dairy, chickpea water. All right, you ready? Wow, it's so airy, yet so decadent. I hope this inspires you guys to cook low waste and zero waste recipes at home and try this mousse. But for now, I'm gonna keep enjoying and indulging. Mm. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and each week I'm here with the must have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm Shop All Day contributor Makon Jovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. I'm Shop Today editorial director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in editor's picks. This is Shop All Day Multitasker. I'm Chassie Post, and we're back today with a new episode of Shop All Day, all about multitaskers. Now, these are the items that literally do the most. You know, the fashion pieces that take you from one outfit to the next, and the makeup must-haves that really do the work for you. Wait until you see what made the list. From a jumpsuit that I just love to a three-in-one makeup must-have. And remember, see that QR code in the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. Okay, let's start with fashion. I found the best closet staple you can wear all year long. Meet the Mango Pop T-shirt bodysuit. And I am a huge fan of our first multitasker. You can pair it with virtually everything in your closets. And bodysuits in general have become such a big trend. We've seen them everywhere, and they are the perfect modern foundation piece. They're so flattering. And here's what I like so much about this bodysuit from Mango Pop. It's got that crew neck t-shirt look. So it's essentially an elevated take on your favorite crew neck t-shirt. It's got a little stretch to it and I can vouch for the comfort for this bodysuit. A lot of people get hung up on the snaps, but I own three, and I gotta tell you, it's really comfortable. Another thing I love about this bodysuit, it's infinitely versatile. I mean, you can wear it to work with a midi skirt or a pair of trousers. You can wear it for a night on the town with a pair of high-waisted jeans, heels, maybe a statement earring, or also you can wear it with shorts, and they come in so many great colors, both neutrals that you're gonna use again and again, and it comes in inclusive sizing, extra small to XXL. Okay, another major multitasker and essential, the perfect layer to throw over your bodysuit. If you've been looking for that perfect classic button down, I've found the one for you. Now this button down is destined to become the workhorse of your spring and summer and fall wardrobe. Yes, we all need an easy grab and go shirt in our closet that is ready for every occasion. And this boyfriend button down is it. And I gotta say, what I love so much about it is it has this cool girl effortless vibe. It's a boyfriend silhouette, which means it's slightly oversized. So it's not too big, but it's still really flattering. And this linen light fabric, which is super light. Now, there are a million ways you can wear this shirt. So where does a button down, buttoned up, you know, tuck it in, do that half tuck that you're seeing everywhere. Wear it untucked, sort of like a tunic. And it's got that great shirt tail hem, which means it's longer in the back, which makes it a great shirt to wear with leggings if you want a little bit more coverage. Now you can also wear it as a layering piece when you wear it unbuttoned. So wear it over a tank and shorts. You can even wear it over a bathing suit. Now my favorite thing about this shirt is the high-end details. It's got this classic Safari style. So it's got the two chest pockets. It's also got a convertible sleeve so you can wear the sleeve all the way down or you can cuff it with this cute button tab which I think gives it you know, a little something extra. And it's got this great pleated detail in the back. And it comes in so many fabulous colors. I love the army green, but there's a color for everyone. 
So next up is a must have for the person on the go, the jumpsuit. And this trend isn't going anywhere soon because it's just so easy. You throw it on and you're done. And this black jumpsuit just might win the award of the most versatile item you could ever wear in your closet. It can go anywhere. You can dress it up, you can dress it down. You can wear it to work with a blazer and a loafer and flats. You could wear it out to dinner or to a party with some layered necklaces and heels. You can wear it lounging around your house. It's like your wardrobe BFF. This jumpsuit is also incredibly comfortable. I have one and I never want to take it off. It's perfect for travel and it comes in lots of colors. But if you really want to make a splash, check out this bright cobalt blue. It's one of the colors of the season and I think it is so fun to mix in a pop of color into your spring wardrobe. So next we've got a shoe that I am so excited about. If you're looking to upgrade your shoe game this spring, then you're gonna love these fabulous mules. And I think that these are just so incredibly stylish. Look at the pointed toe, look at the buckle detail. These are a faux suede, they come in two styles, a kitten heel and also a flat slide mule. And I love these hot pink. If you're looking to add a pop of color to your wardrobe, I always feel like accessories are one of the most affordable ways to experiment with trends. And I mean, hot pink buckle mules, the cutest. Next, you're not gonna believe this. The perfect buy for the person on the go. Take your regular lunch bag and upgrade it. So check this little bag out. It's from Calpac. And when you look at it, at first you might think, oh, isn't that an adorable bucket purse? But guess what? It's actually an insulated lunch bag. Yes, I mean, what a chic way to carry your lunch. I think these are such stylish options. Now the brand says that these are water resistant and the interior has lots of great pockets. It's insulated. And how fabulous are these wonderful colors and patterns? I love a little polka dot, as you can see. And I love the lavender. They also come in a leopard, lots of great neutrals. They're great for taking your lunch to work or carrying snacks around town or for a fashionable picnic in the park. And this bag's so cute, you may even be tempted to use it even when you're not packing food. Okay, we've made fashion simple and functional, so on to multitasking beauty. So this is the Play Bento Trio from Kaja, and it's a three-in-one stackable compact that packs a cream bronzer, powder blush, and highlighter all in one. So forget putting multiple makeup items in your purse. Just pop this one in and you're ready for any touch-up. It's so fun to open and close like a little bento box and a blush, highlighter, and bronzer are the only three items that you're gonna need this summer for the sun-kissed glow. And shoppers love how creamy the texture is. I mean, the brand says they're actually infused with mango seed butter to help blend and help also to moisturize. And last, we've got a beauty product that is so useful, it's got multi-purpose in its name. This is the Dr. Papa Multi-Purpose Soothing Balm, and you can use this for almost anything. So the brand says it's actually packed with papa or papaya fruit, olive oil, and aloe vera, and it's designed to help soothe and moisturize. You can use it on your lips, you can use it on your face, you can use it on your hands and on your body. And the brand says you can actually use it on your nails and cuticles. You can use it on your hair. You can put it on your dry ends. You can even use it to help tame your brows. And get this, you can also use it to highlight your cheekbones and your brow bones. Plus, it comes in two formulas, the original and the shea butter. And again, it's such a portable size, you just throw it in your bag and go. So let's go through these products one more time. And you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the Mango Pop t-shirt bodysuit, the button-down shirts, the jumpsuit from Pretty Garden, the faux suede mules, the Calpac insulated lunch bag, the Play Bento Trio from Kaja, and Dr. Papa's multi-purpose soothing balm. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com.
And that's it for Style Finder. Up next, Summer House star and tech founder Danielle Oliveira will share her favorite multitaskers with Mako and Lofu. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. My name is this. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. My name is this. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Hi, welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders, and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. Danielle Oliveira is a Summer House star and tech founder. And Summer House airs on Bravo TV, which is owned by our parent company, NBC Universal. Danielle, I am so excited that you're here today. I'm very happy to be here. Okay, we're talking about multitasking products. Now, before we do that, can we talk about Summer House a little? Oh, yes, we can. Okay, but you also work in tech as well, yes. which is amazing. How do you balance the two? I don't very well. <laughs> <laughs> I need all the help I can get. Is it difficult keeping the two separate? Yes, very. It's more of like a, a mental thing. Yeah. And if you just prioritize the right things and use a lot of fun tools to help you along the way, um, you can do it. Okay, the ultimate multitasker. <laughs> yeah. So Summer House airs every Monday. What do we have to look forward to this season? Oh my gosh. So the wedding, the big wedding between Kyle and Amanda. I think they've been through a lot this season. So it's going to be really great to see that love and that fun back on the screen, and also the reunion, yeah. of course, which might not have as much love. But <laughs> oh, a lot of spice in the reunion? A lot of spice. Oh, yeah. I'm here for that. <laughs> okay, that's exciting. Your ears pricked up. Like, yeah, okay. I'm here for all the spice. <laughs> Speaking of spice, you're actually working on something really cool. You yes. have this new app, it's a fashion app. What were some of the challenges that you sort of faced in getting it up and running? Honestly, just being able to get the right resources, get the right people. Yeah funding, all of that, we still have 50% to go. Mm -hmm. So I think it's all about just getting funds. Yeah. So. Let's talk about what the app actually is. Yeah. What does it do? So it's a platform that will be a one-stop shop. Okay. So you know where you're getting inspiration for style, you're um, having shoppable moments, and you're purging your closet in many different places? Yeah. I want to bring it all 
in one place, one platform yes. that can help you do it all. Okay, I love the sound of that. I'm super <laughs> excited for it to come out. So let's talk about the products that you brought with this. By the way, we're all about multitasking. Why is it important to have products that multitask? I think because we're constantly on the go. Yeah. There's always something going on and the more time you can devote to what you actually want to do and less time executing what you need to do, the better. So mm -hmm. that you could focus on what you actually need to focus on. Because we're busy girls and guys, so yeah. Okay, let's start with the first product. When do you use a tinted moisturizer? Because I'll admit I'm a little ignorant about it. When do you <laughs> use it? I actually used it this morning, okay. um, to be honest. I use it as like my base. So because it has SPF, um, I like to start with that as like my like my foundation. Yes. I build a little bit on top of that because we need a little bit more, you know. <laughs> Flawless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I do use it. Um, so if you've ever used a serum as your base, this is a good substitute or alternative to that. I love that. Spring and summer right around the corner. Yes. So good. Moisturize okay. and you need that SPF. Absolutely. Let's move on to the next product, another multitasker. We have this cheek and lip duo from Jouer. How does it enhance the makeup look? I think a creamy blush actually lasts a lot longer. And when you're on the go all the time, it's nice to have something that's long lasting and that you could do multiple things with. Mm -hmm. So not only is it for um, your cheeks, but you also can use it on your lips. <gasps> oh, I love yeah. how creamy it is too. Yeah. And I love that you can use it in multiple places. That's really, really nice. Okay, let's move on to the next product that we have. Let's talk about all the different ways yes. that we can use this laptop. Case. Okay, so I am a traveler mm -hmm. and I'm constantly working while I travel. So this is great so that you can put your laptop right in here. It stores it safe, but also you could use it as a stand. Nice. So when you're traveling, you're on the go, your desk, you can just have a desk wherever you go. I like how lightweight it is yeah. too. My husband has this big chunky one. <laughs> so I like that this is so lightweight. This is so stylish. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to another type of bag, the crossbody. Yes. Now, what a good moment to use a crossbody. In the airport, a lot, or when you're going shopping. Um, when you're running errands, there's a lot going on. You have your phone, you put it right in there. Mm -hmm. And then you could use your um, the other side for your ID, for your um, credit cards, for literally anything. Um, for your receipts, right in there. I love this for traveling too, like yes. just a great Back little, right, exactly. <laughs> great little bag to take with you. Yeah. Okay, so these tank tops, Danielle, I've seen all over social media and I just absolutely love them. Why do you think they've taken off? I think you could dress them up, dress them down, and everyone loves a power shoulder. Yeah. Like work overtime for that power shoulder. Anything with a good shoulder, I'm all about. It makes you just like look powerful, confident. It's very flattering. It's flattering, but it's great that you could layer a blazer on top yeah. of it, but you could wear it as is. I'm so into these. Speaking of different ways to wear this, these pants, these are so cute. Talk to me about how you style them. So I would wear them with a sneaker, just to dress it down every day, go to work. And then maybe if you wanna elevate that a little bit with a loafer, or if you wanna go out at night, throw a heel on. Literally, it's so versatile, it's so comfortable. The pockets, ladies love a pocket yes. moment. Um, and I just think it's another flattering piece, like that waist is just good for everything. It really is, and it feels so good too. Okay, you mentioned sneakers, and I feel like the 90s are coming back in a big <laughs> way. Can you tell me about these platform sneakers? I love a platform sneaker. You know why? Because wow. I love some height, but I don't wanna wear the heel, I know you love <laughs> heels, but I want the height without having to work so hard for it. I and mean, I think these are perfect. It kind of elevates the look a little bit more. And my mom would love for me to say this. You can yes. throw those in the washing machine and they will come out just as new. I love that. For parents <laughs> that are shopping for their teenagers, young adults, yes. I love that fat toy. You can wear it in your 30s. <laughs> they are ageless. I have them at home. Yes, multitasking ageless shoes. Well, thank you so much for joining Welcome. us. This was so much fun. I loved it. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. All right, now let's run through all the products one more time. The Elta MD SPF Tinted Face Sunscreen, the Blush and Bloom Cheek and Lip Duo from Jouer, the Laptop Sleeve Case and Stand, the Cell Phone Crossbody Bag, the Shoulder Pad Tee, the Paper Bag Waist Pants, and the Sneakers from Superga. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, our editors picks with Adriana Brock, who has more star products to simplify your life. Don't go away. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia?
There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock and we've been sharing our favorite multitaskers and it's finally my turn to tell you our editor's picks. We found the best in beauty and home. These favorites will multitask just as much as you do. And remember, see that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. Let's start in the kitchen. The less dishes we have to wash at the end of the day, the better. And this genius pan makes it so that you can whip up eggs, bacon, and vegetables all at once, and you only have to wash one pan. It is so cool. Reviewers love it for its form and function. According to the brand, it heats evenly on all types of heating surfaces, including induction and electric stovetops, thanks to the uniquely designed base. And the fact that it's a nonstick pan also makes it really easy to clean. All you have to do is wipe up grease with a paper towel and use a little bit of soap and a sponge to finish the job. Okay, I love this next one, especially for those quick weeknight dinners. If you were hoping that they made a version of the nonstick pan for the oven, you are in luck because these dividers can help you get the most out of your sheet pans and cut down the time in the kitchen. Whip up easy dinners with entrees and sides all in one pan. According to the brand, they can be reused over 5,000 times and are oven and air fryer safe up to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And once you're done cooking, you can toss them in the dishwasher. We love a good sheet pan recipe and these dividers make them even easier. This next one is something that truly does it all. It's another space-saving must-have tool. It's a five-in-one from the makers of the Viral Prep Deck Station. You can use it for everything from herb stripping to julienne vegetables and avoid shuffling through your drawers while making dinner. It doesn't take up too much space either, so you can also cut clutter in the kitchen. And we can't forget multitaskers for the home. Investing in your linens is always worth it. These Turkish towels look and feel so luxurious. And according to the brand, they get softer with every wash. They come in a bunch of different colors to match your existing decor in the kitchen or the bathroom. And they also add a little bit of elegance to your space. You can also tie them around your waist as a beach cover up, use them to dry your hair, bring them on your next vacation as a beach towel, or as a park blanket. And once you try them, you're never gonna wanna go back to terry cloth towels. 
These Turkish towels just dry so much faster, according to the brand. Okay, on to makeup. I am constantly running around for work, so I need my makeup to do the work for me in a pinch. And this one promises to get the job done. One Shop Today editor says this is the ultimate lazy girl product in her beauty arsenal. It's from Milk Makeup and you could use it on your cheeks and lips and you'll be ready to walk out the door. It comes in eight different shades that provide a natural finish for a fully flushed look with minimal effort. And it's not just about a pop of color though. The stick is actually made with hydrating ingredients such as mango butter, avocado oil, and apricot oil according to the brand. These are all made to hydrate your skin and this little stick is an all around winner in our book. Okay, so I love makeup brushes from It Cosmetics and here's one that's a two in one brush. So makeup brushes tend to take up a lot of space in our makeup bags. So this two in one tool is a space saver and it's so convenient. The smaller end flawlessly blends out your concealer so you can cover up dark circle blemishes in a pinch and the larger end actually buffs out your foundation for a natural airbrush look. It can be used with liquids, powders, and cream products. And you can use it with all the products you already love. So this next one, I'm sure you guys have heard of. Yes, we are putting Vaseline back on your radar. TikTokers made us look at the drugstore find in a completely different light after we discovered they were using it as an eye cream. Though it won't get rid of dark circles, one dermatologist we spoke to told us that the formula helps keep moisture in so the delicate skin around the eyes is protected. And it's not for everyone though. So if you have sensitive skin, you may wanna hold off on using it under your eyes, but you can still use it on your elbows, lips, and other dry spots on your body. And last, a must have right now, this brand has been changing the game of sunscreen and we have their latest. There was never really a one size fits all solution for sun protection until we discovered this new launch from Supergoop. According to the brand, this face lotion is suitable for all skin types and all skin tones. It doesn't leave a white cast or a greasy finish, so you can seamlessly incorporate it into your skincare routine. Because yes, dermatologists all agree that you should wear sunscreen every day. And not only does this product provide SPF protection, but it also protects against blue light according to the brand. Let's run through the products one more time. The divided grill pan, the prep deck five-in-one multi-tool, the sheet pan set, the Turkish towel, the milk makeup lip and cheek stick, the concealer and foundation brush from It Cosmetics, the Vaseline, and the sunscreen from Supergoop. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. And that's a wrap on Editor's Pick and for our show. It's been so fun showing you our favorites. Tune in next week for a special Mother's Day episode of Shop All Day. Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker.
Can I ask you a very basic personal question? A basic personal question? Yes. How have you managed uh, to sandwich those two together? Go for it. Your family uh, at home, do you miss them? Um, yes, I think, especially over the last two years, for most people, have they not missed their family, right? The inability to be able to get home yeah. and see them. Of course, that's a, yeah, that's a huge part of it. But do you miss your brother, your dad? Look, I mean, I'm, for me, at the moment, I'm here yeah. focused on these guys yeah. and these families and giving everything that I can, 120% to them, mm -hmm. to make sure that they have the experience of a lifetime. Yeah. That's my focus here, and then when I leave here, I get back and my focus is my family, who I miss massively. You do, I <laughs> yeah. bet. But of course I do, they're two, two little people, you know, and I, as much as it is every single day you're with them and trying to work and trying to juggle, you know, being a parent and all the other bits and pieces that come with this new life that we've got, um, that's, a, that's a constant, constant balance. Invictus, are you ready? Together, you are healing and teaching the world as you go. And you as individuals are people of substance, of resilience, of strength, and of heart. You have the heart of Invictus. So we've been talking about the Invictus games, and there was one woman who came up to me yesterday, and she said something that totally struck me in my soul. She said, the Invictus Games saved my life. Hmm. And I said, what? She said, they, they, they saved my life. She said, I don't have a physical uh, ailment, mm -hmm. but I have mental illness. I have PTSD. And I was on the verge of suicide. Mm -hmm. And I saw the advertisement for these games, and they saved my life. How does that land for you? Third hand, it still feels, it feels amazing. But every, every single games that I go to, I hear the same thing from so many of them. And it's not just from the competitors, it's from their families as well. It feels amazing that we've managed to play a part in their recovery, but it also makes me incredibly sad to know that that's how dark it was for them. But then you see these individuals who have been labeled or diagnosed with PTSD, which rolls off the tongue mm -hmm. really easily for most people. But I would say 99% of the time, the individuals that I meet that have been diagnosed with PTSD is actually PTSI. It's an injury, it's not a disorder. Yeah. Because you're here yes. doing this in front yes. of these cameras, with these lights, with this yes. crowd, with these noises, all the things that trigger you. Yes. And you're now here playing sport, representing your country. Is your doctor still telling you that you have a disorder or that perhaps it's an injury and that uh. you can actually heal from it and you can get better from it? You know what I was so struck by with her too? She told the truth. Yeah. I feel like people here are open. They just mm -hmm. say it. I have this issue. Mm -hmm. This is in me. This injury is inside me. And they're not afraid to say the words. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that's yeah, important. It's, it's, look, it's the, certainly the comfort of being yeah. within this community gives them the, that opportunity. But I've always believed that so much of what happens within this community is so relatable to the outside community sure. as well. Like what these guys, girls, kids, <laughs> families, what they've all been through and what they continue to go through. Everybody else can take so many lessons from them, so many, rather than having to go through the whole thing again and we're thinking, what, what do I do? Where do I turn? Yeah. How do I get through this? Oh, I'm feeling anxious. Oh, I'm depressed. It's like, look no further than these, this, this community, this entire community, because whether you're a mum, dad, grandparent, kid, or a service member yourself, yeah. remove the uniform from this. Yes. That's the biggest advice that I can give everybody who's watching it at home, is just remove the, remove the uniform, right? Because whether it's physical trauma or mental trauma, we are all susceptible to it, and more so now than we've ever been before because of the state of the world. So again, these are ambassadors leading, I, leading the charge. I feel like for you too, I mean, you've spoken about obviously mental health issues. When you put that heavy backpack down, like people are lugging stuff around, when you finally put it down, do you feel yourself like peaceful? I think everyone ends up feeling lighter, I think is the best way to describe it. For so many people, it's about management. Mm -hmm you know the things that trigger you, therefore you try and stay away from that. Or you change your daily yeah. routine to shop at different hours yeah. and not take the, the underground or the subway, you guys call it. Yeah. I think it's unique to everybody. Um, but what I do know is that there is a light at the end of the tunnel for absolutely everyone. everybody. And whenever you've hit your rock bottom, the darkest point, that getting your life back on track the distance between that yeah. really is down to mindset and what you are willing to or what you are brave enough 
to, to go out and get. If you want it, mm -hmm. go and get it. And if you've got that support structure around you, then that time that time lapse is going to be um, Com compressed. In compressed. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters bang down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next, who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I feel like the only thing, and I'm speaking for myself, and I don't know if you feel the same way, the only thing I want in my life is to feel like peaceful. That's it. And that feels, that feeling of feeling at ease and peaceful is like you can't, you, there's, not, there's not a dollar you can put on it. And I'm wondering for you, you've lived in, in the United States for, for two years. Do you feel peaceful now? I don't, I don't know how many people feel truly peaceful, you yeah. know? I feel, at times I feel massively at peace, but with everything that's going on in the world and trying to help and trying to use yeah. the platform and the influence to try and steer people mm -hmm. to try to help. And again, like, I think the, the biggest concern or the biggest issue that people wrestle with on a daily basis that does provide more anxiety for me and for them is the helplessness, mm -hmm. right? Is not being able to help. help. A, so an individual or a problem that's mm -hmm. somewhere around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and we as human beings are compassionate people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when your life becomes really hard, mm -hmm. it can be, for some, harder to find the compassion for other people. Yeah, It's hard enough for me. I don't have anything left to, to give. give. Yeah. But what I've learned over the years is, certainly for myself, I find healing in helping others. Mm. And I think that, to me, certainly after the last two years of COVID, and the ongoing COVID is putting the sort of the, the way that the story has been told to one mm -hmm. side, but the realities of what's happening within the communities around the world is people have come mm -hmm. to help other people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, a, that's what we should really be focusing on. I love on. that. You know, I feel like life is, um, is, happens on a random Wednesday. Like, here's an example. Some people say, oh my God, I'm gonna go on a vacation. My life's gonna be great. Yeah, yeah. And it's like exclamation points, the vacation, the graduation, the marriage, the baby, those are yeah. all up here. The other exclamation marks are down here. It's like sad things that happen, loss, divorce, whatever. Mm. Most of life is Wednesday. Yeah. It doesn't have the highs and it doesn't have the lows. It's just Wednesday. Yeah. So for you, how is your Wednesday? Like, how's life? I'm glad, you, see, I'm glad you say it's a Wednesday rather than a Monday. <laughs> yeah, I, I still get, when well, I used to get, <laughs> for a long time, for most of my life, um, Sunday night blues. Yeah. So that whole school feeling of, mm -hmm. right, Sunday night, you're going, yeah. you're going back to school and it's yeah. like waking up at school on a Monday morning yeah. going, ugh. <laughs> and then when you then you move on to sort of employment and it's like, ugh, Monday morning again, here we go. So yeah, Wednesday, but Wednesday's a good day. What's it like though? Because you, it's you, it's your wife, it's your kids. What's a Wednesday like for you? Random. It's Wednesday, like, like it, it, it revolves around the kids as much as humanly possible. Yeah. Like this whole working from home stuff is, mm -hmm. is, is not all it's cracked up to be. Um, certainly post COVID, because it's really hard. Like we've got our office in, at home, and we, and we're working there solidly. Um, mm -hmm. But then the kids, the kids are there. Archie's at school at the moment, which is great. Mm -hmm. So for the morning section, um, he's there with his friends. Um, and Lily's now already 10, 10 months old. Um, but when your kids and you are in the same place, it's yeah. really hard to separate the work from, from them because they kind of overlap. So, I mean, Archie spends more time 
interrupting our Zoom calls Does he? Um, than anybody else. Um, Does he have your personality? But he also gets us off them as well, so that's also, yeah. also a nice thing. Is he kind of like you? He's got a little bit of the... Your thing, what's my, what's you know, my your thing? your cheeky thing, my that thing you thing. do. Yeah, no, I think so. Yeah. He's um, yeah. look, I'll, I'll always try and I always try and keep that. I think the, you know, the cheekiness is something that keeps you alive. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, there's, there's just there's so much to be happy about in the outside world, but there's also so much to worry about. Mm -hmm. um, but I do my 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 sort of mantra now every day is, and it's 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 a dangerous one because mm. I need to make sure that I don't have burnout. But is trying to make the world a better place for my kids. Mm. Otherwise, what's the point in bringing kids into this world, right? It's a it's a responsibility that I feel as a parent that you probably feel as a I parent do. as well. And it's and we can't fix everything. We know that. Yeah. But what we can do is be there for each other. And I think that that surge, that wave, mm -hmm. just as it happens here in Invictus. You throw in one of the one of the team was just saying this in the UK team. They were just saying a huge thank you for, to us for putting it on. They said it's amazing what we've created because, again, in a pond you throw a stone, plop, and the ripple effect that mm. it has to so many people mm -hmm. here in this community, I believe, happens on the outside, on the outside of this park as mm -hmm. well. So that's what that's what this is about. Is okay. again giving a platform to the people who I think and know that they want to. They always want to. They always want to serve. You're a great ambassador for this uh, this whole thing. Um, you obviously made a lot of news recently. You came home to the UK. You saw your grandmother. How was that? It was great. It was really nice to see her. Be able to see her in some element of privacy was 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 nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was. It was I haven't been back to the UK. I haven't had a chance to go back to the UK uh, for a couple of years, apart from those two times. One to, to for my grandfather's funeral, and one for unveiling a statue of my mum. So those were the two. Chances of How did it feel being back? Um, being with her. Being with her, it was great. It was it was just so nice to see her. You know, she's on she's on great form. We always she's always got a great sense of humour uh, with me, and I'm just making sure that she's you know protected and got the, the right people around. Well, her. you you make her laugh. That's what she always says. Uh, uh, did you do it again? <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, I did. Uh, both <laughs> Megan and I had tea with her, so it was it was really nice to catch up with her. Um, yeah, and you know, home. Home for me now is, is, is you know, for the time being, it's in the, it's in the, it's in the States. States. And it really, and it feels that way as well. Does um, it? Yeah. It's, we've been welcomed with open arms. You have. Um, and it's got such a great community up in Santa Barbara, so. So you feel like that's home more for you? Yeah. Is that weird to say? No, but I'm sure it'll become a thing. That's all right. Your grandmother's going to be 96 day after tomorrow. Yeah. What's the, what's the, what's the best thing about her? I don't know what the best thing about it is. <laughs> to be honest with you, it's her sense of humor yeah. and her ability to see the, the humor in so many, so many mm -hmm. different things. We, we have a really special relationship. We talk about things that she can't talk about with anybody else. I love that. Um, so that's always a, a nice piece to it. But I think she's, I think after a certain age, you get bored of birthdays. You do? You think she's bored of her 96? She won't so. be bored of the Jubilee, will she? Uh, no. Okay. I don't think so. <laughs> she's, had a, she's had a few jubilees now, so every, everyone's slightly, yeah. every, everyone is slightly different. But yeah. I think she, I'm sure she's looking Do you think to you'll it. come for the jubilee? I don't know yet. There's lots of things with security uh, issues and everything else. So this is what I'm trying to do, trying to make it possible that you know that I can get my kids to meet her. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, are you waiting for that day? It's a huge part of it, yeah. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. We will meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Yeah, who's this? These days, 
it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I was thinking about a new life. Like, you got a, a whole restart. Mm -hmm. You have a whole new focus, a whole new nucleus. How does that land with you? No, I think the focus is very much the same. Right? Is it? Yeah, oh. certainly from, from, from my yeah. own, my wife's point of view, yeah. for the two of us, you know, this was a life that she signed up for mm -hmm. and that we were committed to doing together as a couple mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. um, because of the circumstances, we've now m moved that life of service to the States and we'll continue mm -hmm. to do what we were doing before. So in that regard, nothing's changed for us. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's just a little bit more complicated to yeah. have to sort of restart, sure. if you know what I mean, sure. from, from, a, from a blank canvas. Sure. Tell me about your, how involved you are as a dad. What do you love about fatherhood? Oh, what do I love about fatherhood? Yeah. All of it. The chaos, the learning, the reminder of just every element of yourself, your soul, right? Just it, oh. When you're not a parent, you can get sucked into all sorts of different yeah. stuff. And you maybe sometimes forget who you are. Mm -hmm. and suddenly, as a parent, Especially now, Archie, the age he's at, asking all the questions. What does he ask? Questions. It just those questions of the why. Yeah. He's into the why stage. Yeah. yeah. Why this? Why that? Why that? Uh -huh. And instead of just trying to like, I don't know, move it on, I give him the most honest answer that I can, mm -hmm. and then it goes on and on and on until he's satisfied, and then <laughs> that's it. It's done. Yeah. Otherwise, it ends up with because the world is round and that's the way that <laughs> that, life is. That's just the way it goes. <laughs> so you know, it's like I love it. I I love every every part of it. I've always. I've said this years and years and years. I've mm -hmm. always wanted to be a dad. I've always mm. wanted to have my own kids. And now I've got mm. two little people who I'm responsible for. You know? Do you tell them or do you tell Archie, since he's old enough, about your mom? Yes, yeah, yeah, very much so. I don't tell him all the stuff that happened, but you... certainly that this is, you know, Grandma Diana and we've got a couple of photos up in the house. Oh. Bob is here with these guys and give them the support I can and try to work out what and how I'm going to do my closing <laughs> speech. Yeah, what are you going to say? I don't know yet. Yeah. I, otherwise, if I knew, I, would, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I have, I have no idea. Oh. I have no idea mm -hmm. what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. I struggled for the 24 hours before the opening ceremony. My biggest struggle was trying to find the right words for Team Ukraine. I knew. I, you know what? It was so poignant and beautiful. I was going to say, I watched I that just, speech. I, but I don't know. And even being interviewed with the, with the, uh, the Dutch um, yeah. television crew, yeah. they were like, you said this. What did you mean by that? And I said, I just saying that we can, words are one part of it, yeah. right? But there must be so much yeah. more that yeah. we can do. And then when you speak to them and you see them and you hear their stories, I just, I worry about them and I worry about all of us. Once mm -hmm. we leave these games, they're the ones that have to get on a, on a, on a bus and head back into a war sure. zone and then take off their Invictus strip and put back on their uniform and then, you know, go and stand in a trench. Mm. That is, the, if that's the world that we're living in now, I just, you know, it's, again, as a parent more than anything, it's really hard to, to swallow that and be there on the stage and be in a position where all you can really do is help with words when you know, I really want to be able to use this week and this opportunity to somehow try and, I guess, encourage more than that. Do you, just lastly, in this moment or in these moments, do you ever feel your mom's presence? Because when you were talking just then mm -hmm. about how much it may, this means to you, mm -hmm. like, I had this feeling just now. Yeah, yeah. no, um, for me, um, it's constant. It has been over the last two years, more so than ever before. Mm. Um, it's almost as though she's... Done her, done her bit with my with my brother, and now she's very much like helping me. We've got got him set up. Now she's helping me set up. That's what <laughs> it feels like, you know. Um, he's got he's got his kids. I've got my kids. You know, the circumstances are obviously different, but no, she I I feel her presence in almost everything that I do now. <laughs> um, but definitely more so in the last two years than ever before, without question. So she's, she's watching over us. Sure, she's proud of you. <laughs> I'm sure she is. <laughs>stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now.
We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Well, maybe Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? At the Invictus Games, displays of courage and perseverance are everywhere you look. It's a message Prince Harry hopes everyone will hear as he cheers on sick and wounded servicemen and women as they compete. Like Joel Rodriguez, a retired U.S. Army Staff Sergeant. Now, rugby is my jam. I love rugby. Did you play it before your accident? So, no, I played all American sports, yeah. basketball, baseball, yeah. football. Yeah. And then um, I got hurt. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I can play basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my, my physical therapist came and was like, you know, there's a sport that I think you'd like to play. Hmm. And um, I was like, sure, so take it out. At this point, I, I was, I've been in the hospital for about a week, two weeks. I was like, just get me out of this place. Yeah. I just want to see I the sun. Care. Yeah. Um, so she took me to go see wheelchair rugby and I still had this neck brace on and I was in a power chair and I was like put me in this thing and my wife looked at me and was like absolutely <laughs> not <laughs> you just broke your neck I was like put me in this thing um, the idea wow. of like, charging a wheelchair into it's, someone else's wheelchair I mean and these guys were these guys were flipping each other over mm -hmm. um, and right there I was like oh I'm playing this okay so Joel for those who may not realize you are incredible at wheelchair rugby, wheelchair basketball. You were on the track because I saw you. You're swimming. You do all of these sports. That's, That's you. What? Just tell me about it. Like, like you're like a multi-athlete. Uh, I mean, to be in these games, I think it improves. It, it, yeah. You should be a multi-athlete. I think it improves every sport if you're a multi-athlete. You know, a lot of uh, this is my second Invictus, so a lot of the, the newer guys ask me, "What should I train on?" And I'd say train a little bit in everything, but train your bigger muscle groups because if you train those bigger muscle groups, it kind of helps you with everything. You know where I was yesterday during the 400 meters? I was standing between your wife who had your son up on her shoulders and your mother. And you were, you were making your way around the track and everyone was cheering and screaming. And your mother started yelling, that's my son. That's my son. Everyone was weeping around her. And I just it just struck me that this is a family affair. This isn't just uh, about you. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, I mean, my whole family has been a great, a great support system, even after injury. I mean, before injury, they were always with me. And then after injury, I mean, it's huge to have that support. You know, I've seen a lot of injuries come in and out. And sometimes they just don't have that support system. And could lead you to a dark place. I'm, I'm very happy and fortunate and blessed that I have this family. Can I ask you, because in 2014, when you had your accident, a lot of people would have thought, these are the cards I'm dealt. This is what I get, and I have to live with this. And maybe maybe have taken it kind of slowly through life. You did the total opposite, man. You went all the way in. You said cards, and that's funny, because when my wife came to see me in um, probably a day after my surgery, She's like, are you okay? I said, well, these are the cards I have, so I have to play them. <laughs> and I said, so I'm just going to do what I can to be the best person I can in this situation. And, I mean, it's I'm still doing it. That's, that's all we can do. Harry, what do the Joels mean to you? I mean, you're watching these guys on the track. You just saw them play rugby, right? Mm -hmm. what, what does it mean to watch uh, these guys and women just shine like this? 
I think, as far as I'm concerned, they've sh they've they've sh they've shone throughout their careers anyway, right? This whole thing started from my experience back in Afghanistan, 2007, 2008, and to see what these individuals were doing, but not not being celebrated for because no one asks for it, right? Mm. You sign up and that is your that is your service, and then when you come home, it's no one really talks about it. And mm -hmm. in some instances, you find the right community to be able to talk about it, but otherwise, it's just like life is you're back into reality, mm -hmm. right? A different version of, of reality for, to, to so many. But for, you know, to be able to see Joel and his family just <laughs> flourish in moments like this, it means everything. But it's, it is, it's the, it comes back to the very simple thing, which is this, the power of sport, mm. you know? Not just physical, but the, the mental rehabilitation that it takes is, is phenomenal. But none of it would be possible without the mindset. Yeah. And that mindset, yeah. so much of it, yeah. I believe, comes from the training that we've that we've all had. So you know whether that's you know in the US um, at Walter Reed or whether it's maybe somewhere else in the UK at uh, Headley Court or uh, Selig Hospital, the banter between the individuals, mm -hmm. it's, it's this con continual encouragement oh, that even if the doctor turns around to you and says, "I'm really sorry, but you're probably never going to walk again," <sighs> that to most of these guys is like, "I'm going to prove you wrong." And nine times out of ten, if not every time, they do. So they are they are proving that the impossible is entirely possible, <coughs> mainly with 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 the strength of a mindset saying I can achieve anything. I've done this before. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> my gosh, because you you're right. This isn't uh, this is my she's first. Time. I am because <laughs> she apparently cried like ten times yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? I'll tell you why. Because it's meaningful. Yep. because it matters and when you're here you really do feel it this is my first time at the Invictus game so mm. I didn't know what to expect when I came here yeah. I was so blown away because it's not about sport it's not just about sports it's not just about competition it's not just about camaraderie it's something bigger than all of that like I couldn't even put my finger on it it was like soulful what, what is it well, I, I don't know I mean maybe we're, maybe we're different our answers but for me it's purpose you know yeah um, these these guys um, they were serving, they signed up to serve. For most of them, they were willing to serve or at least committed to serve for 20, maybe 30 years in some, some instances. I for sure was a lifer. Yeah, and then suddenly in your 20s or your 30s, you are literally, I mean, your life, your life has changed, mm. right? Some form of injury has then stopped you from being able to do the one thing that you loved and that mm -hmm. one service towards your country. Um, so this, mm -hmm. the Invictus family, is the continuation of yeah. service. Right, so much of the sport is 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 helping and healing them mm -hmm. as the individual and them as a family. Mm -hmm. But what they are again proving mm -hmm. to the rest of the world mm -hmm. is that whatever you come up against, whether it's physical or mental trauma, that you can actually get through it. Mm -hmm. And I think that yeah. message now mm -hmm. more than ever, and I say this every year, but now mm -hmm. more than ever, is so important because mm -hmm. for too long we have associated trauma. Yeah with those yeah. in uniform yeah. and probably then even more so just on operations rather than at home as opposed to yeah. you no know, trauma is every single mm -hmm. one of us yeah. right that that, yeah. that can affect our lives deeply yes. so these guys in my mind are ambassadors because they're the first ones to go through yeah. on such a scale yeah. and now they're continuing to serve and continuing to lead and that's huge beautiful who's going to who's going to win who's going to win the uh, world rugby i think usa is going to actually i know usa is going to take it all the way there you go I mean, we, we, we just had to clean up a little things. I said it to my teammates. They didn't beat us. We beat ourselves. We had some three unforced errors, and guess how much we lost by? Three. three. See? I think the final's going to be pretty epic. You remember what my son said to you? What? As soon as he saw uh, you? The first, he first time he saw me was... Can I see the princess? Is that and what I was he like, said? Okay, well, you know, I get that a lot now. Do you? And it's like, hi, nice to see you. Where's your wife? Where's your wife? That's exactly <laughs> like, okay, fine. He's like, hi, can I see the princess? <laughs> I'm really sorry, she's not here right now. Can Sweet. I leave? Can you, can you leave and, then, and then he was like, okay. Just, <laughs> like, we're not, we're <laughs> like, we're gonna play with his toys. How does it feel to be it's second? It's always banana? a tricky one with kids as <laughs> yeah, well. You know, know. The kids is like, hey, where's your crown and cape? It's like we don't actually yeah. have that. But then, thank you. There you go. There you go. Joelle, thank you, honey. That oh. was great. Prince Harry carrying on his mother's commitment to making the world a better place as he honors those who triumph.
is up, everybody? It is a terrific Thursday here on Popstar Plus. Thanks for being here. Coming up, two lovely ladies for you, Vanessa Williams and Rachel Dratch. They have a new Broadway play they're going to tell us about. And later, find out what happens when Justin Sylvester and Amber Ruffin explore New York City. It's going to be funny. And last but not least, we dug into the past for a Groundhog Day moment from our vault with Andy McDowell. But first, here are today's Popstar headlines. Best time of the morning. I appreciate the hype. I'll take it. We're going to start with, as good as Alan. with, no, that was good. That was solid. I felt that in my bones. George Michael, the late Wham singer, getting the documentary treatment. This film that's coming out, it's called George Michael Freedom Uncut, is a project that's been in the works since before the Grammy winner's death in 2016. Prior to his passing, George was reportedly heavily involved in the documentary. The final cut is set to feature his voice narrating the story behind his chart-topping career. Of course, it'll cover his personal life. George is also credited as a co-director on the movie that includes, as you can imagine, incredible interviews with the likes of Stevie Wonder and Elton John and Tony Bennett. Again, it's called George Michael Freedom Uncut and it hits theaters June 22nd. Next up, prehistoric planet. What happens when you mix British national treasure David Attenborough with <laughs> Jurassic Park? Well, you get this wildly realistic docu-series about the history of dinosaurs. The five-part show uses photorealistic visual effects to paint a picture of what creatures on Earth surface 66 million years ago. And for perspective, that's exactly when Al started working here. On <laughs> Here's a peek at the trailer. <laughs> Some creatures could be called magnificent. Explore the coastlines where giants roam. The deserts where danger rules. And ice worlds where survival is everything. I mean, That's come amazing. on. Come on. First of all, you know it's going to be good because of David's voice. Yes. Yeah. yes. Then you have John Favreau who's doing it. He's producing it. That's wow. And then all the That's score. Never mind the visuals going to yeah. be amazing as you just saw. But the score is done by Hans um, Zimmer. The, the dinosaurs look a little friendly, though. It's not like Jurassic Park. I don't, I don't, I don't oh, see those are the herbivores. They look okay, a little friendly. Yeah, I didn't see any The ones right that eat there. plants look friendly. Wait till you get to the carnivores. They're going <laughs> to come out. We'll see. That comes out on May 23rd. Thanks for the tee up. Apple TV Plus is where you're going to go for that. Savannah? You can help us with this one. Next up on Jeopardy. Last night, Canadian contestant Matea Roach continued her 12-game winning streak after this rare final Jeopardy round. All right. At the end of Double Jeopardy, I'm afraid Lonnie and Sean will not be joining us for final today. It's always hard to run into an 11-day champ, I imagine. It's a rare solo final Jeopardy in the category on the Internet. I've never so seen I guess that. it has maybe happened before, but it's just very rare. I, yeah, I didn't even know that. But I, they didn't have any money to bet, so they just no. ushered them out. Well, going into the final round, Mateo was the only contestant not in the negatives and still qualified to compete. Since she had nothing to lose, the tutor from Toronto wagered five grand and guessed correctly, uh, bringing her total game winnings so far to over two hundred seventy thousand wow. dollars. Congrats! Wow! It should yeah. be like Vegas. You should be able to go and get a line of credit and right. then come yeah, back right. and say, like, I'm, "I'm going to nail or this one." Or at least let them right. stay yeah. and. Watch. I'm sure They're like, get like out of here. Yeah. <laughs> or you just go, you know what? Here, take my watch. I'm going to wager this thing. Uh, and finally, Stephen King, this week, the legendary author, horrified the internet when he tweeted out this microwave salmon recipe. Yeah, what? Get a nice salmon filet at the supermarket, not too big. Put some olive oil and lemon juice on it. Wrap it in damp paper, to damp paper towels. Nuke it. On the microwave. Three minutes or so. Eat it. Maybe add a salad. The idea of microwave cooking fresh fish really scared a lot of users on Twitter, including our own Steph Rule, who wrote back, the smell of microwave fish is more horrifying than anything <laughs> yeah, you've penned. Another person adding, this may be the shortest horror story you've ever written. But believe it or not, Stephen's not the only one nuking fish. He received support from fellow microwave chefs who claim that the wet paper towel is key to, I guess, to making this thing edible. What do you guys think? Is a quick meal gross or is it a genius life hack? I love a microwave. Okay, yeah. but I have to draw the line at microwaving fish. My, you. you will my never get that smell out. My dad has microwaved king crab legs. So. Oh. And my dad's a big microwave chef. Well, one not of, good. One of my biggest pet peeves in life is people who microwave fish at work. Yes. Oh my yeah. God. How, how could you? That should be illegal. How could or popcorn, because then you're like so then hungry. Then you just want it. Yeah. What, what do you think? I think the salmon in the wet paper towel, if you break up the salmon and like put it in a salad, that could, that could, I could see that working, okay. but not as like your main protein for dinner. No. I'd yeah. want to cook it in a skillet. I was a little disappointing to see that from Stephen. Yeah, yeah, you'd think you well, could. Great national yeah. People have thoughts. All right, and now to the reason we call the show Popstar Plus. A few more headlines for you. First up, the Royals. Of course, ahead of the Queen's upcoming Jubilee, she's getting all decked out. 
in miniature. Queen Elizabeth is the latest historical figure to receive the Barbie treatment with Mattel's new limited edition doll. The Barbie comes, as you can imagine, lovely in an ivory gown with royal accessories, including a replica of the Queen's blue sash and silver star, representing her membership to the Order of the Garter. And if you're interested in picking up one of these suckers, the anniversary doll is selling for a whopping 75 bucks, but what a nice little collector's item there. The Queen's Platinum Jubilee is set to kick off in June. And finally, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. A new teaser is out for the upcoming Marvel movie. The preview is giving fans a sneak peek inside MCU's latest collaboration between Benedict Cumberbatch's Stephen Strange and Elizabeth Olsen's Wanda Maximoff. Take a look. The multiverse is dangerous. I could use an Avenger. It's about time you showed up. On May 6th. Enter a world of strange. Try not to break the multiverse, Stephen. Oh, come on. I mean, I don't know about you, but I need a pie chart, I need graphs, I need a compass to figure out this whole multi-universe thing, but it sure is fun, and that looks great. Doctor Strange hits theaters on May 6th, and those are your headlines. Next up, Vanessa Williams and Rachel Dratch give us a gl glimpse into their brand new comedic play, all about the women in charge of Commander-in-Chief. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia, could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Hey, who's this? Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. All right, welcome back to Popstar Plus. Vanessa Williams and Rachel Dratch are two women of many, many talents. And their latest Broadway project is an exciting one. They spoke to our third hour about taking the stage in a new play called POTUS. We are joined this morning by two incredibly talented women. You know Vanessa Williams from her film and television work and roles like Wilhelmina Slater from the hit show Ugly Betty. And of course, you know, the hilarious Rachel Dratch from the seven years she spent on Saturday Night Live creating a lot of memorable characters. My personal, personal favorite, Debbie Downer. The best. Oh, the oh. best. Well, because that's you. Oh. You can relate. Uh, <laughs> Vanessa and Rachel are here. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Nailed it. <laughs> Uh, you guys are here to talk about your new show, a Broadway show called POTUS. Um, and it's a farce about a group of seven brilliant women helping keep the president in office as he relies on them to manage his many personal and professional crisis. Vanessa and Rachel, good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? And I know you brought some photos because you've had a chance to meet several first ladies well, I am, from what I've been told. Yes, right? And I you am play one, right? first lady, yes. So, so did I, you use that for inspiration? Uh, there are a couple of nods. Um, I, I start uh, act one in red, so that's uh, kind of close to the Nancy Reagan red because that's when I met her. I was 20 years old. I'd just wow. been crowned Miss America and that was my first visit to the White House. Yeah. So that was pretty amazing. And uh, I have a headband in Act two, so that's kind of a nod to Hillary. I have met, uh, as you can see, many first ladies. Yeah. And, and uh, actually, it looks like you've met all the first ladies. Yeah. I mean, really just in my life. That was my takeaway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have. I've been really, really lucky. But, you know, it's. 
I play a first lady. Uh, she's pretty formidable, but we can't even say a lot of the words that are in the show because it is a... It's a salty language. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Body as yes. It's not for kids. So yeah. you play the first lady, yes. and you sort of play this character that's like the, the president's work wife. You play a secretary. Again, yeah. we don't want to give away too much, but describe... Describe your character. Well, my character takes a journey. Um, <laughs> no, she starts out as very mousy and like, oh my God, did I do this right? La la la. So that's really fun to play. And then <clears throat> some things happen and uh -huh. she breaks out of her shell. The say. nerd lets loose. <laughs> yes, oh, exactly. Yeah. The nerd lets loose. Yeah. Okay. So it, yeah. the show is a farce, <clears throat> but it, it really boils down to relationships between females. And the cast itself is incredible. I mean, just to go through some of the names, Julie White, Julianne Huff, Susie Nakamura. I mean, what is it like getting to work together? And I'm assuming everyone brings their own flair to their characters. Oh, yeah. I mean, as soon as Leah Delaria steps on stage, <laughs> all her fans scream, and she brings her Leah-isms, yeah. as, as you can see her dancing. And, <clears throat> and that's our kind of our mega mix at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. um, how would I describe it? I mean, someone who saw it said that it's almost like bridesmaids in the White House oh. because it's zany. <laughs> it is. Oh, that's hysterical. That's yeah, sign yeah. me up. That sounds great. A lot of physical comedy and, um, you know, it's a farce. So a lot of like slamming doors mm. and crazy things going wrong. Yeah. Yes. And I saw in the research, it's also, it's apolitical. So yes. it, it takes shots at both sides. It's yes. fun. They're, yeah. It's they're... neither red nor blue. <laughs> you, never, you never see the president. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's an offstage character. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. um, but it is really fun to see everyone, all the different actors bring their own energy. And right. Everyone's so good. It's just fun to watch them. For me, it's just fun to sit back and watch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I can't believe that this is her first time on Broadway. She's, of course, really? amazing. She's it's a pro. She hasn't done. But, exactly. So we uh, welcome her you. with open Thank arms. You. And she's <laughs> killing it. Are killing you having it. flashbacks to <clears throat> SNL? I mean, all, all the rehearsals and the um, running around? I mean, the thing, I, the, the similarity is that there is a live audience there, which is what I love. So um, that's that's the only, but there's no cue cards, so um, yeah. I have to learn my lines this time. <laughs> Got it. yeah. It's all up yeah. in here. But the, the whole like you know crazy comedy part of it is what I love doing. So that's yeah. like. And the playwright up. is 28 years old. That's I mean, it's really? pretty, yeah, she's Over really hours. young and and Incredible. vivacious, and the audience loves all the text. Again, there's a lot of stuff that we can't say. Yeah. But um, it's it, it ranges from the regular theater goers to this young audience that is on fire and just can't. They dive into the comedy, and uh, we give it to them every night. And Vanessa, you're no you're no stranger to high heels, but high heeled Crocs, I hear, make an appearance. <laughs> yes, uh, they actually get applause. When they, <laughs> uh, they can't be. I mean, Crocs are comfortable, but high heel Crocs. High heel Crocs, Balenciaga uh, actually oh. debuted them this um, this fall, and in the in the oh, it's script, real? it's real. Oh, okay. So in the script, she, uh, my character is trying to be earthy and relate to people. <laughs> and they're, they're like She's six, a little lofty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, and of course, her Crocs are her attempt to meet with her people uh, on a certain level. And, of course, she ends up not doing the regular Crocs, but the yeah. high heel ones pop in. That sounds like a familiar storyline, but we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there. Uh, exactly. <laughs> oh, and it's directed by Susan Stroman. Oh, yeah. Female power. Won a couple Tonys, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Amazing. A lot of ladies behind the scenes. That's All right. right. Girl it. power. Yeah. yeah. Definitely want to watch that. Vanessa, Rachel, thank you so much for joining us. POTUS is in previews right now and will officially open at the Schubert Theater on April 26th for a limited time Ooh. only, but we know that's never true. It's no. going to keep running forever. Oh, yeah, yeah. That looks great, and that cast is fantastic. Be sure and check out POTUS on Broadway. Coming up next, buckle your seatbelts. That's right, Justin Sylvester and the very funny Amber Ruffin take to the streets of New York. Stay with us. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that 
are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now? What it all means for you for an hour every day? I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. All right, what's happening? We are back, and we love having our friend, Justin Sylvester around and in a new series called Justin in the City, he met up with comedian Amber Ruffin to explore the greatest that New York City has to offer. Here's what happened. Okay, you may not know this, but my friend right here, Justin Sylvester, he grew up in Louisiana before taking LA by storm. Yes, yes. So you know what? What happens when this Southern gentleman and a West Coaster get on the loose in the Big Apple? <laughs> We're finding out in our new series, Justin in the City, where I explore NYC in search of the newest and hippest things. And I got to tell you guys, my first stop, I invited Amber Ruffin on an exhibit called Rise in Y. This experience truly takes you to new heights. Take a look. Hi! Thank you for meeting me here. <laughs> I'm trying to get my New York on. And what better place than Rise and Why, right? By the end of today, you are going to love New York and you're going to want to live here. Hey, Amber and Justin, welcome to Rise and Why, an experience by New Yorkers for New Yorkers. Are you ready? <gasps> yes! We are ready. Let's head in. Broken up into seven distinct galleries ranging from finance to fashion, our first stop was a visual subway tour through the evolution of NYC. I feel like Eddie Murphy coming to America. <laughs> It is nuts to see how this city became this city. So we're going straight from the subway here to Manahata. And this was the original name of the land before our modern day Manhattan. Can I ask you something? Yes. What was the gas price in 1904? <laughs> I'm trying to go back to that. Yeah, I think we all are. So New York City is the first modern city to become vertical instead of horizontal. You're over at um, 30 Rock, right? That's right. It's wild to even think about that building and how it came about. Yeah, it must have taken, I'm gonna guess four or five people? Look, I'm not good at estimating. Our next gallery is the television gallery. And that brings us to this fantastic recreation of the Honeymooner set. It's so cool, it looks exactly like we're there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Oscar, are you on Tinder? No. I would totally go out with you. What? I don't think you can argue with me when I say your taste is garbage. <laughs> the Prince Couch. <laughs> In our next gallery is fashion, one of the most influential, not only for New York City, but for the rest of the world. Ooh. It's crazy that like this looks like McQueen, and this is from? This one here is 1887. Maybe the most stellar artifact that we have in here is the Bill Blass Beyonce dress. Oh, wow! So now we're heading into my favorite gallery, Broadway. Authentic costumes from Chicago, Aladdin, Hamilton, The Lion King, and of course, Phantom of the Opera. I remember the first time I heard, Lena, we cannot record this because we don't own the rights. <laughs> Finally, it was time to soar over NYC. So you're about to take a journey over and through New York City. So do you have any last words? If anything happens to Amber Ruffin, she wants me to have her show. <laughs> Is that right? All right, let's do it. This is what the subway is like. Ah! 
This is where you're going to live when you move to New York. Yeah. The Thanksgiving Parade. This is Amber Ruffin and Justin Sylvester live from New Year's Eve on NBC. We're wishing you a happy new Thank you so much for coming with me. We just did Rise in Wine. I feel like I have a sense of New York. Yeah. I'm on top of the world. <laughs> I'm here in New York. I'm here. <laughs> I'm waiting for someone to say, shut up. We know you're here. You've been here already. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. Honestly, I feel like a real New Yorker after that. You are. I am, and Rise NY is currently open to the public, and you can catch episodes of the Amber Ruffin Show Fridays on Peacock. Well, they are the best. That is so much fun. All right, still coming up, Andy McDowell's big day. We're going to head right into our vault for one of our favorite interviews with the star of the cult classic Groundhog Day. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter, in this closet. I took shelter, right in this closet, right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Welcome back, everybody. Andy McDowell turned 64 today. And to celebrate that, we are dipping into our vault. We're going to take you to the year 1993 when she starred alongside Bill Murray in a little movie called Groundhog Day. Here's her appearance on Today 29 years ago. Let's talk about the movie. Um, I understand you sought out a role in this film. Why did you want to play Rita Hansen? Well, it was, a it was a really good script. It was very warm, had a lot of goodness to it, and they're hard to find scripts like that. Serious even for you? Yeah, they are. You know, most of them have a lot of sex and a lot of violence in them, and I really wanted to do, to do something that my kids could see and my father could see. And it's a funny movie. It's really hysterical. I mean, it's got Bill Murray in it. I'm trying to think over some of the movies you've done. Green Card and Hudson Hawk and, uh, and uh, Sex, Life, and Videotape. Tape, yeah, and some of the others. I mean, are there none that the kids and, and your, and your oh, father they, could go see? No, they, they are. I mean, Green Card was, sure. was fine. But, I mean, this is particularly my taste. It's, and yeah. it's hard to find, you know. Was, but it's a really, it's a great script. Was this your first real comedy? I mean, let's not count Hudson Hawk. Okay. Was, <laughs> was, was this your first real comedy? Well, uh, I would say Green Card was a romantic comedy. This is more of a comedy than that. Yeah. But there was some comedy in, in Green Card and even in Sex, Lies, and Videotape. I mean, the whole, the whole scene where I'm talking about garbage. Yeah, different kind of humor. Was a different though, kind of humor. Yeah. It was a dark humor, yeah. I guess. Do you think, do you think um, one is any less of an actress trying to do comedy as opposed to serious drama. I say that because you're such a, you're a serious actress. <laughs> you are. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Is it any less serious to do comedy? I think it's, it's, you know, a lot of people think it's one of the hardest things to do. But personally, I enjoy doing both. I think it's nice to be able to do both. I would get bored if I were stuck in one category. I'm really glad that I have the opportunity to, to do dramatic roles. As a lot well. of people find it difficult to play across from someone who is the comedian around whom the film revolves around, right? Uh, yes. Was it uncomfortable? No, I had a great time. I really did. I loved. I loved working with Bill. He's very spontaneous. You never knew what he was going to do. I, I always had to be available and relaxed. 
and react to whatever he whatever he was going to do. And you know, that was a challenge. It was fun. Had you ever met him before you started working on the film? I saw him once. He, I, I used to live on up in up on the Upper West Side, and uh -huh. I guess he did too, or whatever. But he worked out at this place. I saw him working out one time. That was one of the most hysterical things I ever saw. Why? It was like watching, cause he, you know, Bill Murray working out. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't work. Oh, well, you know, he was sort of like <laughs> lifting weights, and then he'd go kind of shake it out for about 10 minutes and yeah. lift a weight. <laughs> he's, he's, he's much better when he's dining, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let me, let me show the clip in this, and we'll set it up. I mean, you're, you're his love interest in this film, and he's after you, and you don't see the attraction for a great part of the film um, for some fairly obvious reasons. They should become obvious if we watch this. I like to see a man of advancing years throwing caution to the wind. It's inspiring in a way. My years are not advancing as fast as you might think. More coffee, hon? Yeah, just keep it coming, please. Sure thing. Oh, it's real nice. Just put that anywhere, pal. Yeah. <laughs> Good save. <laughs> Don't you worry about cholesterol, lung cancer, love handles? I don't worry about anything anymore. What makes you so special? Everybody worries about something. Well, that's exactly what makes me so special. I don't even have to floss. Oh. What? <laughs> How many takes did that scene? A lot. Really? Yeah. And he, and he, he ate all that stuff every he time? He ate all that stuff. He, he, yes, that's the way he works. He always wants to really do it, so. And he's not heavy. I mean, I just no, I saw no. him last well, he week. Runs. He's fairly thin. No, he jogs. He, yeah. I think normally he does not stuff food down. His <laughs> but I mean, if you do it in five takes, of <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I I understand that that the um, the character in the title role in this film was not trainable and was somewhat ornery. <laughs> yeah, and he bit Bill. Yeah. The groundhog. Yes. Yeah. Did you ever have to fiddle with it at all? Well, I had the opportunity. They had some baby groundhogs there too, but they're really. <sighs> Mm, they're kind of unattractive. They're kind of wiry and nervous. Yeah, they're basically a glorified rat, huh? Yes, and they're not real fluffy, you know, like yeah. little other little animals that you want to pick up. I think a skunk is more appealing. Gotcha. How many <laughs> of these things did you have on the set? Oh, they had a couple of adults and some babies, but they needed to use the, the adults. So. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> what about you? I mean, you've got two other films uh, coming out uh, pretty soon. Are you getting all the work you want? Well, I'm looking for something really good right now, and there's a lot of, it's not as easy as you think. There's a lot of bad scripts out there, and maybe I'm just too picky, too. Bad scripts meaning they're just not well done, or they're they just, want to define you in stereotypical ways? No, not, not that. It's just that they're just not a, a lot of really interesting scripts. I mean, I get really frustrated trying to find decent ones. I mean, out of 50, maybe I like two. Really? Yeah, it's pretty scary. You ever think that sometimes maybe you're just a little... To no, I don't know? think so. I don't think so because everybody else is, you know, that was reading with me agrees. You and see even their, the you studio, see their fingerprints the, all over the them, studio huh? people, you know, will agree how difficult it is to find interesting material. Yeah. Well, we're glad you found Groundhog Day. Well, I've yeah. got some good stuff coming out. So okay. Thank goodness for that. So we'll see you then. <laughs> okay. Oh man, time flies. That was fun to watch. And again, happy birthday to Andy McDowell. And there you have it. Another Pop Star Plus done and dusted. Thank you for being here and tuning in. We appreciate it. We'll see you again tomorrow. Stay safe. Be well. Bye bye.
Well, hello, everybody, and today, all day, Nation. We are happy you're tuning into our digital show today in 30. It's a lovely Thursday, isn't it? You say Thursday. I say Friday Eve. Uh, but it's, it's another busy morning here in Studio 1A. All the fun coming your way in just a moment. First, though, a quick preview of our top story. It's all about the ongoing mass confusion, when and where people should wear them as the White House fights back against that ruling, striking down the mandate on public transportation. We talked about that with the CEO of United Airlines this morning. Yeah, good conversation. Then we're going to bring you inside the Queen's big day. She's celebrating the big old 9-6. And of course, a lot of folks are focused on Prince Harry's comments to Hoda about his grandmother. Well, we're going to have the latest from Buckingham Palace straight ahead. All that. Plus, our viewers had questions for us on the third hour. So we had some answers. They weren't very good, but we had some answers. Uh, stick around for one of our favorite segments, Q&A today. And who better to talk viral beauty products than our own Bobby T. Bobby Thomas will tell us which ones are actually worth the bucks. And it's all coming your way right now because it's time for Today, today in 30. 30. In just a moment, we're going to talk with the CEO of United Airlines. But let's go first to NBC's Tom Costello. Tom, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Savannah. So let's be clear here. While justice is, in fact, appealing this lone federal judge's decision to wipe out the mask mandate for the entire country, justice is not asking for a stay. It's not asking to reinstate the mask order. What it's trying to do is preserve the integrity and the authority of the CDC to act in the event of a public health emergency going forward forward rather. So if you're confused by the mask mandate, you're not alone. Even as travelers are starting to lower their masks in some modes of public transportation. We can breathe. <laughs> yep. The Justice Department is appealing the ruling by a federal judge who found the mandate exceeded the CDC's authority. Just hours before DOJ filed, the White House said any appeal would be about preserving the CDC's ability to respond to health crises. We expect there to be ups and downs in the pandemic, and we certainly want the CDC to continue to have this authority. Public health experts say that authority is critical to keeping the public safe. When we underpower public health decision making, we put ourselves at risk, um, our families, our communities at risk in the long term. But the DOJ's move follows days of confusion for passengers nationwide, as the TSA and most local transit systems made masks optional. One minute wear them, one minute don't wear them, so hey, I'm keeping mine on. Complicating things, some local jurisdictions have their own rules, like Philadelphia, San Francisco, and New York, where masks are still required in some, but not all, settings. In Amtrak, you don't have to wear a mask, but you have to wear a mask on the bus, the MTA, you got to wear a mask. What's going on? I mean, what is it? Do you, you wear one or you don't wear one? While average daily COVID deaths have been trending down since a spike in February, we are still losing nearly 400 people a day. That's why some travelers say they'll keep masking up. Girja Mahajan in North Carolina says it's frustrating for parents like her with kids under five who can't yet get vaccinated. We can continue to mask, but it also makes us very nervous to travel with individuals who may not be vaccinated and who are additionally not required to wear a mask. For now, in most places, the decision to mask up is up to each individual passenger. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that one, so I choose not to wear one, but it's completely up to you as you want to move forward. All right, so what if you have booked a flight for the next few weeks or into the summer, assuming the mask mandate was going to remain in effect? You've got an immunocompromised family member, young kids. Bottom line is you are highly unlikely to get a refund for that ticket unless the airline cancels your flight you should, though, be able to get a credit uh, for that flight and be able to take another one down the road. Savannah? All right, Tom, I'll pick it up there. Tom Costello, Force there at Reagan National. Tom, thank you. Joining us now exclusively, Scott Kirby, the CEO of United Airlines. Mr. Kirby, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Let's just start with the back and forth. Of course, earlier this week, the federal judge down in Florida rolling back the mask mandate. Two days later, the Justice Department announces it's going to be appealing. Uh, what's, what's your reaction to the judge's decision and the announcement from the administration that they're going to appeal? Well, first, I think the most important point is that the science really indicates, and we help work on the study, 
that an airplane, particularly because of the airflow on an airplane, is literally the safest place you can be indoors and be around other people. And so we were on the road, I think, to removing the mask even before the judge's ruling. And I think Tom Costello had it exactly right. This appeal is mostly about jurisdiction. Uh, I think it's very unlikely that a mask requirement uh, is going to come back uh, any time in the foreseeable future. On the plane, yes, perhaps. But but what about when you're, you know, you're, you're waiting in line at the airport? I was at an airport yesterday. Packed. Probably the most packed I've seen it over the last two and a half years. And now you've got yeah. a lot of folks who are walking around those airports unmasked. Cases up, as you know, 50 percent of the last two weeks. I is this the best time to do this? Yeah, look, broadly in society, I think almost everywhere we go, restaurants, sporting events, everywhere we go, uh, because of the availability of vaccines, the efficacy of treatments, uh, and the way the numbers have come down, uh, broadly everywhere indoors, uh, we're getting back to living life as normal. Uh, COVID is going to be with us. It's going to be endemic. It's going to be here for a long time. But we're learning to live with that, uh, including in airports or in restaurants or at sporting events. And, and by the way, the airports actually wind up being one of the safer places as well, because the standard for air filters and higher while they're not HEPA grade filters they're much higher than in most buildings so you know I look at it compared to other indoor locations right. and an airport is safer than most of the other indoor locations where you'll be what about the immunocompromised what about children under five yeah, so as a father of seven, I have two children under five uh, and am really confident uh, in, in having them out both at airports or if we're taking them to restaurants. We took them to a sporting event, they went to a Mavericks playoff game. Uh, really confident in, in being able to be there. But the important point is all of our customers uh, should feel free to wear a mask. And many of them are. Uh, employees and customers should feel free to wear a mask if they want. And for customers like that that are immunocompromised or that have other concerns or issues, Tom talked about it before, uh, we are working with those customers uh, if they really don't want to fly to find another option, give them a credit, or if they just really don't ever want to fly again, actually willing to give them a refund. Scott, while I have you, I do want to ask you about this report out. Uh, United, along with some other airlines, now apparently um, going to be bringing back some of those passengers that were banned for life for bad behavior. Um, a United saying in a statement, quote, you're going to do it on a case by case basis. But my question is, why, yeah. why would you reward bad behavior? Well, so we didn't ban any of those customers for life. Uh, and some of them are, well, some of them will be banned for life for bad behavior. But customers that simply refuse to wear a mask, what we told them is you can't fly United until the mask mandate is over. Uh, if you're not going to wear a mask, you can't fly. Uh, we have talked to them individually, and, uh, and many of them, you know, assure us that, you know, now that the mask mandate is off, everything is going to be fine. Uh, and I trust that, that uh, the vast majority of them will. Look, we also had it different during the crisis than you've seen in a lot of other airlines. Our flight attendants did an amazing job of de-escalating. We had far few incident, fewer incidents that happened at other airlines. Our flight attendants really did a great job. Uh, and because of that, we're comfortable that these people who just didn't want to wear a mask, now that there's no mask mandate, we can let them come back. Yesterday, you said that uh, you've never seen demand for air travel like you've seen right now, uh, predicting that the rest of 2022 is going to look very good, not just for United, but probably some other yeah. airlines as well. Pilot yeah. shortages, a number of routes have already been cut across the country because of the labor yeah. shortage. How confident are you that United's going to be able to handle the crush of summer travels that you're expecting? Yeah, well, United is in a little different position, again, than some of the others. We've actually hired 6,000 people so far this year. We create great careers. It's not just a job. We create careers with great pay, great benefits for people. So we're able to hire. But there's a lot of strain around the system, around the airports. Uh, and because of that, we're gradually adding our capacity back. You know, we're number one so far this month. And and lowest cancellation rate, highest on-time performance. We're gradually adding capacity back with a recognition that you can't just snap everything in the whole system back. Expect the FAA to double volumes overnight or the TSA or all the other infrastructure. And so we've taken a different approach, which is willing to sacrifice short-term profitability in order to make sure we have high operating reliability for our customers. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Uh, United CEO Scott Kirby just learned that he's a father of seven. Wow, uh, Scott, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. 
what's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The world marking a major milestone for the Queen. Today is her 96th birthday. The celebrations got underway in London just a short time ago with one of several gun salutes in her honor. Yeah, and as for the monarch herself, she's quietly celebrating with family while the UK is reacting loudly to those comments made by Prince Harry in Hoda's exclusive interview. We're going to talk about all of it with our royal commentator, Daisy McAndrew, live from Buckingham Palace. But first, NBC Sam Brock joins us with the latest, the fallout. Sam, good morning. Uh, Savannah, good morning. In that interview, Prince Harry said the Queen was in, quote, great form after suffering a series of health setbacks, including a recent case of COVID. But he also raised eyebrows around the globe when he told Oda that he's making sure she's protected and surrounded by the right people. As the Queen quietly celebrates turning 96, a new photo to mark the occasion, showing her taking the reins of two majestic horses. But the ride to try and unite her somewhat divided family has been long and bumpy. In an interview with Hoda, Prince Harry appeared hopeful, but not certain that he and his wife Meghan Markle and their two kids would be at Buckingham Palace in June. That's when the Queen's historic 70th year on the throne will be honored. Do you think you'll come for the Diamond uh, Jubilee? I don't know yet. There's lots of things with security uh, issues and everything else. So this is what I'm trying to do, trying to make it possible that, you know, that I can get my kids to meet her. There are reports Harry and Meghan have been invited to appear on the balcony with the Queen more than two years after the pair officially resigned from their official royal duties and moved to the U.S. When Hoda asked about the Queen's health after a recent visit, Harry responded with this. Being with her, it was great. It was, it was just so nice to see her. You know, she's on, she's on great form. We always, she's always got a great sense of humor uh, with me, and I'm making sure that she's, you know, protected and got the, the right people around well, her. You, you Prince Harry also notably sidestepping a question about his father, Prince Charles, and older brother, Prince William. But do you miss your brother, your dad? Look, I mean, I'm, for me, at the moment, I'm here yeah. focused on these guys yeah. and these families and giving everything I can. Those comments, combined with Harry's admission that home, for now, is the U.S., led to a wave of reaction in the British tabloids. One calling his words the ultimate royal snub. Following a series of health setbacks, including a bout with COVID, the Queen recently handing over more of her royal duties to her family, with Prince Charles and Camilla recently stepping in at the traditional Easter service. It remains to be seen if she can repair the royal rifts straining her family, before the Queen celebrates 70 years on the throne just a few months from now. Now, after Harry and Meghan's visit with the Queen last week, there was some optimism the two would return with their children for the historic Jubilee celebration in June. Obviously, now, that very much remains unclear at this point. And to mark the Queen's birthday today, the royal family tweeting this picture of a blonde-haired, cherubic Queen Elizabeth, then Princess Elizabeth, wow. guys, at the age of two, saying in 1928 was never expected she would be queen, and this year Her Majesty is celebrating her platinum jubilee, a first in British history, and no doubt a very unlikely set of circumstances yeah. that brought her to that point yeah. in the first place. Yes. No question. We all watch The Crown. We know. Yeah. We know how it all <laughs> went down. Expert. We're yes. up, Sam. Now. <laughs> Sam, thank you. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. If I never got to sing another song, I would still feel the joy that I feel right now. 
We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. It's the little moments that are the transforming moments. Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. Oh my gosh, I could apply that. I want to stop for a second. <laughs> In season two, I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? We'll meet Ukrainians who are defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Yeah, who's this? All right, we are rounding out the hour with a little Friday Eve treat. It's my first time doing Q&A today. We asked you guys to put us in the hot seat, so today we're going to answer some of your questions, and I have you a little first. question I'd like to ask. Oh. Not on this one, but we'll start a little later if we have time on this one. It's a, it's a funny one. So first up, you oh. guys. You guys sent us so many great <laughs> suggestions and questions. Please, please keep them coming. Head to today.com whenever we have those. So first up, I think we're going to ask, um, who is the person you would like to take Another. to... What? Yeah, no, no. Ask that. You're supposed to. Wait, which one? Your first time. Video. Oh, 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 we have a video question. Sorry about that. I've already screwed <laughs> You're this one up. You're messing whole thing up already, Tom. I know. Okay, so a video question. Let's roll a videotape. Hi, I'm Dawn from Mobile, Alabama. If you can invite a dream co-host for the third hour, who would it be? Not Tom Yamas. Yeah, yeah, clearly. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> the oh whole my thing gosh. Um, I guess I'm going to take this one. Yeah. Uh, are you surprised who I would pick? I don't know. It's some some hot guy from the '90s. What? Who, who would it be? Like Zach Morris? Yeah, who would it be? <laughs> no, it would actually be probably Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, Or yeah. Tom Hanks. Those oh, are like my okay. go-to people that I want to just have lunch with. So if I could invite them over um, to help us co-host the show, that would, be, that would be wonderful. We could probably get one of those for you. I doubt it. Maybe. I've been saying this for 10 years. Oh. Those are the two on my list. Right. Okay. Um, Very nice. Craig? So we'll see. Um, it's my turn? What's the, oh, so this is a... Don't okay. you answer oh, the, question? the question? How does this work? Okay. So this is, I am the president founder of a nonprofit organization that mentors to young men aged 18, 8 to 21. Who are some of your mentors that hmm. influenced your lives? That's a good one. Um, gosh. I mean, I, 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 that's a long list. I mean, there was Jim Vance in Washington, D.C., and the longtime anchor there. He was a professional mentor. Uh, my mom? Like, can your hmm. parents? Can your parents? Of course, yeah, of course can. you can. You yeah. would hope they're on the yeah, list. Am I on that, that short list or no? Uh, <laughs> Not after you, this. <laughs> you were until this. No. Uh, oh. Roker, for sure. Yeah. He's a current mentor. Um, yeah. How about you guys? Any stand out? Uh, are we allowed to answer this? Okay, so mentors. Yeah, Jose Diaz Bilart, oh, NBC okay. family. He's yeah, uh, nice an amazing, that. amazing guy. Great guy. Has always been a mentor. And Byron Pitts as well. Byron Pitts is another one who's professionally. But again, yeah, my dad and my mom too. They're, they're yeah. incredible people. Oh, that's nice. We've All got right. another Plaza fan question. For Tom. For Tom. All Let's right. see. Here it comes. I'm Lisa from Youngstown, Ohio. What's a life lesson your parents instilled in you that you're passing on to your own children? Oh, that's, wow. that's a good one. Um, I would say this is so simple, but I think it's important. It's just to be a good person. Mm -hmm. And, and what, what I mean by that is that my dad always says, you know, don't let little things get you upset that, that it turns you into a bad person. Let things go. So right. always try to be the good person in any kind of situation. And it's hard. That one's it's, it's an easy yeah. one, but it's hard. How about you? That's good. Life lessons from yeah. my parents. Um, I, I would say they taught me how to, you know, be independent, you know, to take care of myself yeah. to, and in a good way. You know, it's not like they let us fend for ourselves. But, I mean, yeah. I, I can get things done. You know, like yes, the, you can. The, the door is creaky. I, 
I could, I could just fix that. You know, it's yeah. like I can cook dinner when dinner needs to be cooked. Like, I just, I'm independent to the point where I can just get things done. All right. Yeah. What all right. Uh, uh, this answer? next question for us, that one. What? all of us. <laughs> Terry Rope 62 wants to know what we're reading right now. Dylan, you first. Um, I swear I'm not even doing this as a shameless plug, but the boys asked to watch Misty, to, to read Misty the Cloud every night. Oh, your, um, oh my your best gosh. children's book? Really? How could they? Whoa. Okay. No, all right. And it's adorable because Ollie knows all the words now, so he reads it in the tone that I read it. Oh, um, and also Grumpy Monkey. Because Grumpy Monkey? Th and that's what I'm reading right now. I like that. How okay. Correct. So. Uh, I'm reading a book called Youngblood Hawk which is from Herman Woke, who's written like a, a lot of great novels. He's one of my favorite writers. And uh, I like to read a book and listen to a book. And so I'm listening to- At the same time? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to Raising Men, which is a really good book. Craig, you probably like this. It's about raising young men, but it's written from uh, the perspective of a Navy SEAL sniper. Oh, so wow. it, Yeah, so there's that. So it's about discipline and just like sounds living like life is good. Like, how, and you're probably reading some too. I'm reading, so to this, one, this, was, this actually came out a few years ago. It's by Hanif abdul -Rakib. Uh, Little Devil in America. It's a it's a collection of essays. Okay. Um, but it's but it's essays that look at um, cultural uh, touchstones over the last hundred years. But but some of them more obscure than others. But it's it's a primarily African American uh, to do that lens. Wow. But like everything from like the history of like playing spades to why we should all be celebrating certain artists. Do you play spades? Oh, yes. I love playing spades. What? Yes. We should I get a tournament going. This. We should get a tournament well, I, going I, here. I feel a buddy up. Okay. <laughs> Time for the boost, and here we go. A soldier who's been away for six months made his 16-year-old brother choke up when he surprised him at his high school in Massachusetts. Here's how it went down. Colby Tilton has been training with the National Guard in Missouri, and because he and his younger brother Dylan are just two years apart, they've always been the best of friends. Hello, soldier. Yeah, I'll leave. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So sweet. That's what yeah. they call a bro hug. Seriously, that's yeah. Hardcore they bro just hug. bro down right yeah. there. Their mom says it was really hard on Dylan when his big brother went away to boot camp. The good news is he will be home for a couple of months. Super sweet. That's a good one. Ukrainians were defending their country one block at a time. When you were still in Kiev, could you hear the bombing? My name is Lester. Who is this? Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Okay, it is time for Bobby's Best, where today's style editor, Bobby Thomas, tells us all the latest and greatest and all things beauty. Okay, I she love this. Could it have come on a better time? A better time, because we want to dish about all these products. Today is about products that are going viral on social. <laughs> we want to know, are they worth the hype, Bob? Delicious, are yeah. they? <laughs> I will tell you. First, okay. I actually want to start off with Glow Recipe. This was founded by Sarah and Christine, two girls that I knew years ago when I was doing Bobby's Buzz. They were curating the best of K-beauty on their site. 
they decided they wanted to make a product with watermelon. And what they watermelon. did this was what they here. made this watermelon sleeping mask. You probably remember this. Yeah. This is now one of the most liked product of all time on Sephora.com. Wow. What do so you do with it? You sleep in this, and yeah. they harness the power of watermelon and uh, other fruit acids uh -huh. to really build this entire collection. They became so popular, they had to shut down the oh, other site. And then what's this thing? Site. This is their dew drops. This oh. in one year. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Okay. It smells like so, gum. Oh. In one year, this product look sold it. out 17 times globally. I, look at I'm a hand and model. has grossed ten million dollars. <laughs> look at my hands, y'all. Oh my gosh. They're so excited. Smell it though. Um, so that product oh. is currently the number three serum at Sephora, and I want to say for good reason. It's light. Yes, it is. The packaging is just indulgent. They're even working on eco-friendly packaging. No, the whole the product range is between ten and forty-eight dollars. Okay. So it's in a sweet spot. They even have fruit babies for twenty-two dollars. And you know, it's funny. They were like the original influencers in K Beauty, yeah. and now Michaela, who's an influencer, hi Michaela, yeah. on TikTok that has twelve million followers. Wow. I adore her. She collaborated, and now they're having influencers come to them wow. to collaborate. Okay, yes. wait, can we talk about a great mascara? Because yes. I'm yes. always Me looking too. for one. This is Sky High. Sky High by Maybelline. I know you like Maybelline. I do. Um, <laughs> so wait, let's think about how many views do you think this has had on TikTok? How many views? Yeah, like views. What, how does it get a view? Does this have a TikTok account? Well, it doesn't have TikTok, but a hashtag, Sky High oh. Mascara. Oh, let's uh, just take a guess. A million? A million five. Five hundred million. In one year, 500 million. This mascara sold out four times at Ulta when it launched. And I have to say. Why is it so great? Begrudgingly, I wanted to not like it. I thought, is this really that great? Yeah. I have it's fake great. On. Do you I use, have to is it say, all you use? No, I've started using it. It is pretty great. And when you see all the before and afters online, yeah. it really takes those that have lashes yeah. and volumizes and lengthens. Okay. And so it's a nice price. It's $9. So yeah, I mean, it's great. great. You know what? I also has a nice cap. You just like you just click mine? and it clicks in. That's, I think it's for me. I don't <laughs> think it's. I'm pretty sure that was mine. <laughs> well, I okay. used it. I'm going to redirect y'all to this because Jenna. <laughs> redirect. I have to give Jenna some credit. She brought this on air a couple sure. years ago. I and along it. with a couple other million fans. This became was I a, the one that yeah, made it famous. One of them, I think. Um, this was the hot air one-step styling brush yes. that everybody loved. That's not this one. So oh. this was the original. They have now launched, thanks a to feedback. One. Look, they've made one for ladies like you with lobs and bobs for shorter hairstyles with like a lobs smaller. Lobs. It's a smaller long barrel. Bobs. Oh, long bobs. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Look, so this small also, barrel. It's nicer for for smaller hands. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. And then watch this because I already bought this. Oh, like you, it's me. great for travel. It actually comes off. Yes. So, so you, you know, can. like I said, this long old thing in your bag or your purse is or whatever. Is that the one I used of yours the yes. other week? Yes. It and is. what's good about this one is it gives you a little more curl. It has a thinner handle like you noted when yeah. you grabbed it. It has one more heat setting medium. But I will say, it is totally worth the hype. It saves you time and allows yes. people who don't Remember know how to do Remember in the pandemic and we were all doing yes. our own hair for yeah. years and years? This, this is the only reason. One, I mean, I'm not saying my hair was good, but it was the only really reason. Warning, it was Make sure you don't over dry your hair. And last but not least, Rita Hazan, one of our favorites. I love her. She is now at Walmart. And what that means wow. is when your favorite boutique brand scores, this is now $12 instead of the original $25. Is it that root thing? Yes, yeah. the root concealer. Oh. It's won awards. It's sold out. It a little Rudy. If you don't Excuse know, me? <laughs> she just told me I was looking Rudy. Just I a like little that look. Rudy. Thank you. Whatever. Okay, listen. I do want everyone to know at home. This is so great because when you speak up and spend your dollars, they even had knockoffs at the drugstore. Yeah. But. They weren't as great, so Walmart brought her in, and now it's twelve dollars because it's cheaper to produce. So everybody it's mass produce. Get their Rita. Can, yes, can we color. just bring in um, special beauty correspondent Savannah Guthrie? Yeah. What? Do you <laughs> have a product that you posted? Oh, yeah. I posted this because I, you know, when you find a product and you're like, I'm obsessed with this, I love it. They always stop making it. So that happened. This was this La Roche Posay, and it's like a BB cream. And Do on the weekends, a I would like put it on and it was like a putting a mask on, you know, like put all, I don't know where it is, but anyway, I she posted it Instagram. and then Bobby <laughs> I had a targeted me and said, oh, here it is. why is your, your bathroom is so no, messy? What I said was, 
I am coming over immediately. What's going on? <laughs> because I wanted to, A, number one, you could call me. I wanted to give you, and people had really great suggestions. They did. Yes, but I was Can just I, um, having a Can I say that time. next week I've got a faves and finds that will answer it for you. Okay. And you're going to have to tune in. But I actually have a product that I use every weekend. It's for and that. And I approve. It's just for that, and Bobby approves. I like that blurring effect, you know? Yeah. Like for I think I'm going to do a whole best on the bases, like what you use first. Yeah. Okay, just that's the the primers, and just so glows, you know, you thought lighting. that was so messy. I actually was like, this looks good. She I, it's actually, it. I cleaned it. Just that was my thing. clean drawer. And then Bobby's shaming Bobby, me. we I love you so, so you. much. To check out any of these products, head to today.com slash yeah. shop. That was a fantastic show. How do we do it? We pack it all in. <clears throat> Guys, join us tomorrow. We're going to celebrate Earth Day. We've got Al live in Puerto Rico and our attempt at a special Guinness World Record. Uh -oh. How am I just hearing about this now? Uh -oh. Maybe it's Alice's attempt. Well, I hope so. I hope so. We'll see you tomorrow. by Walmart. Welcome to the Today All Day Kitchen. We're turning everyday leftovers into brand new dishes for the Today Table. With a little imagination and a few fresh ingredients, we'll show you how to make amazing next day dishes. I'm starting off your morning right with a hearty protein packed quiche. And I'll be whipping up the perfect lunch or anytime snack. Crispy rice cakes with the perfect savory toppings. And I'm making a velvety chocolate mousse with a surprising ingredient. Get ready. Because we're clearing out the fridge. And leaving no leftover behind. You can shop the ingredients featured here from our sponsor, Walmart, by scanning the QR code. Today earns a commission from purchases made through links on today.com. Whenever I'm doing meal prep, I usually end up with a few leftover ingredients. Today, I'm using some leftover rotisserie chicken to make a quiche with spinach, feta, and sun-dried tomatoes. So, let's get started with our crust. I've got some store-bought pie crust right here, and I'm gonna lightly flour my surface. You don't need too much. All the hard work has been done for us. We're just gonna roll out our pie crust. And be really gentle with it because it is pretty fragile. All right, I'm gonna sprinkle the pie crust with a little bit of flour, and we are going to roll this out. Just gently enlarge it, so that way it'll fit comfortably inside of our pie pan. Okay, I've got this rolled out really nicely, so I'm gonna take my pie pan, I'm just gonna put it right on top of it, just like this. And just take your fingers and lightly go around the edges. I'm telling you, the first time I did this, I felt super accomplished because I'm like, I'm a baker now. I'm, I'm baking. Mama, look at me. And then you're going to take these edges that are falling over. You're going to just fold them up under here so that way you kind of get an even crust. This is the today all day kitchen, right? So we're going to just make it a little bit fancier. So after I get done doing this, we're going to add some texture and some form to this pie crust. And all you're gonna do is a trick I learned. You're gonna take your finger right up under here and crimp it down, press down, and pull it out. Down, and pull it out. All the way like this. And go all the way around the pie crust. I know, the first time I did this, I was like, yo, Kev, look at you. He's a baking machine. And keep going around the edges. All right, the last one here. All right, now look at this. It looked like it's from a bake shop, right? I know. I did it myself. And you could do it too. So with our pie crust ready, it is camera ready. We're gonna let this rest in the fridge while I prep the rest of the ingredients. Next thing we're gonna prep is our spinach. All right, I'm going to set a stainless steel skillet on a medium high heat. In goes a little bit of water. That's all we wanna see. Watch this, boom. In goes the spinach. It's like the Wizard of Oz. It's melting, it's melting. You shouldn't have to cook the spinach for more than one minute. 
and boom, this is just about right because I don't want it to be completely mushy. I'm gonna take it out. All right, spinach is cooked. Move on to the other star, the sun-dried tomatoes. All right, we're gonna stack our tomatoes together. Just take a knife. We're just gonna dice them. Look at all this goodness. And they're very fragrant too. Now, moving on to my leftover rotisserie chicken. We're gonna take the skin off of the chicken. Peel that back. I know some of y'all are just moaning right now, like, <laughs> what are you doing? It's all right, don't worry. There's still a lot of flavor in this dish and you're not gonna miss it. Just going to make sure that there are no bones in here. And you can pull it apart with your hands first, especially if it's cold and left over. If it's warm from just purchasing it, then you may have to use some forks. But I just like to get in there and just use my hands. But of course you do what's most comfortable for you. And try not to do a little bit of this, which I am so guilty of. But you know, a little tasting along the way isn't a bad thing. What home cook doesn't nibble and taste along the way? That's how you know it's good. Let's move on with the recipe. Next part that we have to do, we've got to prep our eggs. So I'm gonna be using some whole eggs. If you are team lean and mean and you want a wonderful, delicious egg white quiche, mmm, can't wait to wake up to that on the weekend. <laughs> I'm kidding, I eat egg white. But for this one, my leftovers deserve whole eggs. Extra protein, a little extra fat, a little extra love, that's all I'm saying. Add in a little bit of milk, Whisk this up, and we're gonna season it with a little bit of sea salt and pepper for the culture. Boom, salt, pepper. The internet will let you know if you cook unseasoned food right away. And I'm pretty sure our today all day kitchen fam is no different. <laughs> there we go. Now, it is time to bring together our beautiful quiche. I'm gonna add in our chicken. Just spread it out. This is gonna be a really meaty protein pack quiche. And you wanna spread it out very well on the pie crust to make sure that every slice gets a little bit of that protein. There we go. Adding in some of our sun-dried tomatoes. Sprinkle those around as well. In goes the spinach. There we go. Our last bit of a protein boost and flavor boost. The feta. Just kind of crumble it up. I bought this crumble, but if you want to buy the entire block, just use a fork to crumble it up on a plate and then do it. There we go. Now let's give this one more whisk and we're gonna pour in our egg. Watch the slow pour. Getting a little bit more, just some texture on top. Cracked pepper. Boom. Look at this beauty. It looks amazing before we've even baked it. This is what we want. We're gonna bake this beauty for about 45 minutes at 350 or until the center is set. I've let this cool for about 15 minutes. It's still really warm, so it's perfect. You can see when I move it, there's no movement there. Let's dig in. I'm gonna give myself a nice, generous portion of this. Oh my gosh, and look how creamy it is. Look at it. The heat has just made that feta just even creamier. I can't wait to dig in. Self-control and portion control is gonna be hard with this one, so don't write me and complain. Kev, okay, I ate the whole thing. <laughs> I understand. Mmm, mmm. I guarantee you, your friends, your family will love this. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. 
rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Whenever I order takeout, I usually have a ton of rice left over. You could always just reheat and eat what you've got, but I love making crispy rice cakes. So many different cultures have their own version of crispy rice, and now it is all over TikTok. So I cannot wait to show you mine. We are going to start with our rice, and I have three cups right here. So we're gonna add a couple other things to it to boost its flavor and also make sure that it all sticks together and doesn't fall apart when frying. So what we wanna do is we just wanna take some cornstarch right here, and we are going to add in a little bit of water, and then we're actually gonna add in some lemon. We're just going to whisk it on up into a slurry. It smells fabulous, super fragrant. We are going to pour it over the top of the rice. I'm also going to season it with some kosher salt, a nice little three finger pinch. And then we are just going to fold it all together. Here I have an eight by eight square baking dish and I have lined it with some plastic wrap. So we're just going to take that rice, pop it directly into the pan, and with our fingers, which I find clean hands can honestly be the best tools in the kitchen, we are going to just press that rice down into the corners of the pan. Looking good. It is always so much fun to take leftovers and turn them into something new and awesome. I think that a lot of people don't realize the beauty of half of the work already being done for you. We're going to freeze it for at least one hour, up to two hours. And while that's freezing, I'm gonna get some of my toppings ready. I love topping my rice cakes with the perfect soft boiled egg. So I'm gonna show you how to make the perfect one, my little tips and tricks to do it. First thing you wanna do, boil some water. I am going to take a spider, you could also take a slotted spoon, and delicately lower those eggs one by one into the boiling water. While those eggs are going, let's get to work on our lemony scallion yogurt sauce. Starting off, I have two cleaned scallions right here. What we're going to do is we're going to trim off the root of those scallions. And then we will slice them on an angle, also known as a bias, into really thin rounds. So we'll just take that, pop it directly into the sauce, and then we are going to take that lemon half that we have from earlier, squeeze all that juice right into the yogurt. And then we're gonna hit it with a little bit of salt to awaken its flavor. So we're gonna mix this up. And there you go, we have our yogurt sauce. And it almost looks like a looser version of scallion cream cheese. Our eggs are done. We are going to strain them and immediately transfer them into our ice bath. And what the ice bath is gonna do is it's going to shock the eggs and immediately stop them from continuing to cook. Another thing that I love about an ice bath is as that egg cools, what's going to happen is the white is going to slowly pull back from the shell, creating a really thin layer that will allow us to peel these eggs beautifully. 
Okay, our eggs have been chilling out and it is time to crack them. So what I'll do is I'll take the egg and I will tap it on a flat surface to break up that shell. And then here's my trusty sidekick. Say hello to the spoon. We wanna make sure that the spoon goes underneath that coating and the spoon is going to do a gorgeous job of lifting that shell right off. Wow. How satisfying is that? I mean, come on, you guys, take a look at that. Absolutely perfect soft boiled egg. Our rice is nice and frozen and it is time to fry them up. So we're going to start by adding avocado oil to our skillet. We are going to heat this up until it is shimmering and while we're waiting for that to heat up, let's slice up our rice. We're going to take that overhang that we have and delicately lift the rice block out. Look at how great that looks. Pull it back. And then what I like to do to make sure that we have even squares is I like to slice off about a half of an inch off of the sides of the rice. And you really wanna make sure that you're using a sharp knife here. Fabulous. Take this, compost it, and then we are going to cut these into nine even pieces, about two inches by two inches. We are going to crisp these up for about five minutes per side until we get a nice golden brown crust on the exterior. Set your timers. These are looking really good and now it is time to flip. Ooh, gorgeous golden. We love to see that. These are looking beautiful. We're gonna transfer them to a wire rack lined baking sheet. And we wanna salt these rice cakes while they are still hot so that they can hold on to the salt that hits them. Okay, I'm going to fry up this next batch and then it will be the moment we're all waiting for, topping the rice cakes and eating them. You can top these any way you like, but I'm gonna show you my favorite way to serve these crispy rice cakes. We'll start with our beautiful avocado. Whenever I'm picking an avocado, I always wanna make sure that when I press down, it has a little bit of give. Another great way to test is I'll look at the top of the avocado where the stem is. If you pull the stem out and you see that the inside is a nice bright green color, that is how you know the avocado is perfectly ripe. So we are going to take a sharp knife we will insert it into the top of the avocado until you hit the pit. And then delicately roll the avocado around, slicing through to cut it in half. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. As far as peeling the avocado is concerned, instead of scooping it out with a spoon, I love to peel the skin off with my fingers. And then we are going to take the avocado and with the tip of our knife, we will slice into thin strips. I just really love how fancy it looks when you slice it. I think adding a nice, punchy, bright element with a lemon wedge is an awesome way to just give a little extra oomph to your overall presentation. Next up, we have our eggs. This is a really fun trick that I love to use when I am serving these eggs on our crispy rice. You're gonna take your egg. If you want, you can dunk it in a little bit of water or you could even just roll it in that residual lemon just to get it slightly wet. And then what you're going to do is you're gonna take that seasoning and you're going to roll the egg into the Everything Bagel seasoning. I'm a big fan of Everything Bagel seasoning, huge fan. And once this is nicely seasoned, you'll take your sharp knife and slice right through, revealing that perfect jammy yolk. Are you kidding me? I mean, how stunning is that? That is incredibly satisfying. So let's bring back one of our crispy rice pieces. This one has that avocado on it. 
And for this one, some of our pastrami smoked salmon. I love pastrami smoked salmon, so it's just your traditional smoked salmon, except it has pastrami spice on it. Now I'm gonna plate these up and make them even more gorgeous with our sauce. And what I like to do is just create a really beautiful swoosh on the bottom of the platter and just spread it into a really beautiful layer. Now it is time to adorn our platter with our crispy rice. So remember those green scallion tops that we saved earlier? We are going to take them and just sprinkle them over the tops just for a little extra jewelry and flavor. Okay, I can't contain myself. I have to try one of these. I'm gonna take a little lemon, squeeze it over the top. Let's give it a taste. Okay, first of all, do you hear that crunch? That is stunning. I just have to say that this is one reason why you should never toss out your leftover rice. I promise you, you can always put it to good use. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Can this still end diplomatically with Vladimir Putin in charge of Russia? There's a Supreme Court nominee. What would it take for you to vote to confirm her? So I guess the question is, can this end with sanctions alone? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Making Space, the inspirational podcast from Hoda Kotb. Listen now. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Ukraine and Russia. Could you help me understand what's going on? So to help make sense of it, we've created a newscast just for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. When I first went vegan, I thought I'd had to give up chocolate desserts for good, since so many dessert recipes include dairy or eggs. But now, my day isn't complete without something chocolatey and sweet. It didn't take long for me to discover the magic of aquafaba. What is that, you ask? Well, it's the leftover ingredient that's the key to my fluffy chocolate mousse. And it's actually found in a can of chickpeas. But before we get to that, let's start melting some chocolate. So I have my chocolate here over a double boiler, so let's turn on the heat. We want to set this to a slow simmer. And there's all different varieties of vegan chocolate. I'm using mini chips, but they also have chunks, they have big chips, and it also comes in whole bars. I like the mini chips because they melt quickly, they're easy to work with, and I just want to get my mousse done quickly, so why not go the easy route? Our water is at a slow, gentle simmer, so our chocolate is gonna start melting. You wanna make sure to continuously stir it so then that the heat can be distributed throughout the chocolate and it'll melt evenly. Okay, so once all the chips are melted, our next ingredient for our mousse base is some vegan sweetened condensed milk. This is made entirely from coconut and it is so good, it's gonna add a nice creamy base and really thicken up that chocolate and kind of make it a ganache consistency. Now, you can flavor this however you'd like, but 
I like mine a little bit luxurious and indulgent, so we're gonna give this an amaretto flavor. So it's gonna be a bit of almond, a bit of vanilla. It's gonna taste like Italy. So to this, we're gonna add one ounce of amaretto liquor. Once the liquor is incorporated, we're gonna add in two flavorings, a splash of vanilla and a splash of almond. Almond extract smells so good, but a little goes a long way. It's very strong. So make sure to just add a tiny splash because otherwise it'll become too bitter and overwhelm the whole dish. And it should look like this, glossy and thick, almost like the consistency of a ganache. So this looks great, so I'm gonna remove it from the heat and let it cool completely. So while our chocolate cools, we can work on our secret ingredient, our aquafaba. So aquafaba may sound fancy, but all it is is the water from a can of chickpeas. Instead of tossing this, which most people do, if you whip aquafaba up, it turns into a consistency almost of an egg white or like a meringue. You can use it in all different ways. The way I would think about aquafaba is the same as egg whites. So if you were to use egg whites in a dish or even whipped cream, you can substitute it with aquafaba. I recommend getting a can of low sodium or no salt added chickpeas. That way the water doesn't affect the flavor of what you're making. So what we wanna do is to our stand mixer fitted with the whip attachment, we want to make sure that our bowl is chilled. So right before I whip up my aquafaba, I like to keep my bowl in the fridge for at least 10 to 15 minutes so it gets ice cold. And the reason why we wanna do that is because it'll then help us whip up the aquafaba so it turns into stiff peaks. If it's too warm, then it's not gonna whip up and it's just gonna fall flat. So lock in your mixer and we're gonna set it to high. So I'm gonna stop the mixer because I wanna add a little bit of cream of tartar. This is gonna help stiffen up the peaks and get us that nice glossy stiff peak that we're looking for in a chocolate mousse. So let's go ahead and add that in and turn on mixer back on high. Let's give it another minute or two to get it real stiff. Because the stiffer it is, the more delicate and airy our mousse is gonna be. Okay, our aquafaba is looking good. Yep, this is exactly what we want. A stiff peak, it doesn't fall. So now we want to fold our aquafaba into our melted chocolate that's been cooled. We start with a little bit and you gently fold it in. If I just sat here and stirred it, it would turn into a soup and it would not set into a mousse. So we wanna make sure we're adding in as much air as possible. So I keep folding until I don't see any more streaks and then I go in with some more dollops of aquafaba. Okay, this looks beautiful. So we're ready for our next dollop. This is looking great, it's all an even color. So now I just have to get into little jars so it can set in the fridge. So I'm gonna clear up my area so I can do that. So we're gonna pour this in here and set it in the fridge overnight. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life this is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet, right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To stand on the edge of the cliff and jump takes a lot of guts. We are meeting people one after the next who have made profound changes. I think you're going to be blown away by the life lessons. Join Hoda for new episodes of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. 
We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. So our moose have set overnight and they look beautiful. You can see they're perfectly set. There's no liquid. You can see all of the beautiful air bubbles. It does not look vegan, let me tell you. I'm garnishing these with fresh cherries, but you can easily use a jarred cherry like an amarena, which will go really well with this. Okay, now I think it's fair to say that I have been waiting way too long to actually dig into this. So why don't we go for a taste? Can you believe this texture? This is made from chickpea water. No egg whites, no dairy, chickpea water. All right, you ready? Wow, it's so airy, yet so decadent. I hope this inspires you guys to cook low waste and zero waste recipes at home and try this mousse. But for now, I'm gonna keep enjoying and indulging. Mm. Good morning. Up in the air, more mass confusion this morning after the federal government decides to fight in court, looking to reverse the ruling that lifted mask mandates. The CDC saying the masks are still needed.